Welcome to Thought Crimes, everyone. This is your girl, Sensei, and I'm here with... Hey, yo, this is your man, Prince Solo and Peace Solo in the building. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, we have advanced. We have advanced. We have advanced to the, to the next round. Yeah, that's right. I dropped it on you bitches. I dropped it on you bitches, right? That's what, that's what I did. So, listen... It has been confirmed that it is not AI. All right, how do you all feel about that? It is not AI. Shouts out to the wonderful people in the chat too, by the way. We do have an exclusive Patreon where we're going to be listening, re-listening to the track. And then we're going to be dissecting the lyrics, pause and stop in a live reaction, things of that nature. So y'all get over there. It's going to be beginning at what time, Sam? 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. We will be having right. a listening party yes. to drop and give me 50, get money. <laughs> we're going to be listening to it on our Patreon for everybody to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be having a party to listen to some of the tracks from We Still Don't Trust You as well. Yeah. We're going to be having a whole breakdown and all that behind the paywall. So everybody come join us. Come join our Patreon. We're going to have a, a lot of fun. Yeah, um, you guys in the chat too, by the way. All right, you guys in the chat too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> make sure you guys can hear us perfectly. I just want to make sure now. I want to make sure you guys can hear us. You get what I'm saying? Okay, Ceiling says, nah, this ain't it. Can't be. They saying, is it real? Look, I'm going to be real with you all. At the beginning, at the beginning, when he took in that, that exhale or then the inhale, he was waiting to exhale on the track, right? When he took in it, I said, because at first we was trying to figure it, but we was like, nah, that sound like that nigga. Immediately, I was like, yeah, it yeah, sounds sound like, like him. him. Yeah, because he was like, ah, <laughs> you shit on these niggas. All right, so, yeah, you, you do have to have fun with it. Look, look, they said, they saying, nah, stop lying, it ain't real. Look, they saying that it's real. It's being confirmed by other outlets, too. By the way, we're looking at, you know, Complex, and it's trending. And listen, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Some of the bars in there. Some of the bars in there. Look, look they said that's how I know it's real. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to listen to it live. We're going to re-listen to it. It's going to be a listening party on Patreon. So we're going to hang here for you all and break down our initial thoughts. Uh, look, this is what we're looking for. Keep it on the bars. Keep it on the bars. We're already hearing some of the, the internet chat goons trying to get busy. But the drop and give me 50. They got me talking to niggas like I'm 50. You know, a lot of interesting bars there. At the beginning, at the beginning, first of all, rest in peace to Rico Wade. I got to say that. Rest in peace to Rico. Talk about the irony. Dungeon Rico Wade, yeah, Dungeon Family, look, yeah, responsible for a lot, huge to the Atlanta scene, uh, which also has its influence on the South and then, of course, globally as well, just like Memphis and Houston and everything else. But rest in peace to Rico Wade, and then, boom, you hit with this this record now at the beginning as i suspected he was gonna quickly throw his bars out there on future right away i handed you to number ones right i handed you the number ones your first number one is in from drake's hand he is the chart father in that particular sense you can't deny the co-signing of drake in that manner so one thing i did like on the track is that he came in confident he right, definitely right. came in because i keep telling you guys kendrick lamar's weapon is his him conviction. Being, conviction. Drake is his vulnerability, but also having confidence at the same time. You have to have that. You know, so, um, yeah, we're about to get into it now. Let's yeah. go see. Um, he also talked about most of Rick Ross' uh, top true. charters involve him. Which is true. Which is true. Which is true. But, you know, he can't say that with Kendrick, though. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, he, he, he focused on calling uh, Kendrick uh, Midget Man and all this. And again, some people are alleging that it's AI. I will put that out there because OVO camp, if they don't like the reception, they may remove it and say, say it was AI. You know, that's like the Twitter. I was right. hacked. That's, but, the, that's what that is but like. But I'm going to be honest. To me, it did not feeling. sound like no damn AI. Nah. Most of the AI Drake sounded garbage like from what I've heard. You know, some of them, you know, a lot of them have sounded garbage. Um, they don't sound as bad as the AI pox out there. I will you say. You know what I'm saying? To your point, it is true that most of the AI sound garbage. Yes. And also, I would say this this record is better than Seven Minute Drill. <laughs> well, the interesting part about it, again, J. Cole got shot up from the back. He did. He said. He got shot up twice in the disc. I like when he said, you know, fuck Cole. <laughs> he basically yeah. said, I, I ain't going where Cole is going. He said, it's me featuring me and I removed you. There is no big three. And he also said a lot of uh, fiery shit about Top Dog. 
Like, you know, a lot of egging on. He was talking about don't call my phone saying there's no beef. And and I want we have some people in the industry in the chat. We also have some people who are just great listeners to hip hop. He's so, out the gate. He's out. I don't trust you West Coast niggas. So night night and the rest of y'all when y'all call in, because we will have a call in a bit later. Y'all let me know. You know, what is this talk that Drake has been doing since he did the meltdown with Travis Scott? He's been claiming that industry niggas have been having their top dogs call him and say, Drake, this is there's no real issue. Can somebody confirm that uh, to us? Are niggas uh, fronting in the foreground saying they want beef? Of but are they in the background calling up Drake? There are people calling up Drake saying they want peace. Y'all let us know when y'all call in. And also a couple of things from the chat that they told us. One person said that Drake was working on a diss record with Mickey Fax. Another person, Night Night, told us that Drake was trying to muscle Metro and Future behind the scenes to not make money off of We Don't Trust You and We Still Don't Trust You. So Night Night is going to call in, of course, eventually and tell us his perspective on that. And then also the person who told us about the Mickey Facts, if you want to call in later as well and, and share your perspective, we're all here. All right, so look. All right, let's just get into it, right? I like the energy of the track, but it does feel like a sequel to Charged Up to me personally. I, I don't, I don't feel like it's the necessary kill shot per se. You saying it's a, it's a trap? Well, that's what you discussed because I, I wanted you to, you know, go into your theory as well. I'm just, you know, coming from my perspective because I remember when Charged Up dropped, um, it was all right. I actually liked the instrumental to Charged Up, but I felt like. Uh, it was what it was and then he saw the response online that it was a lukewarm response which is one of the reasons why Meek Mill felt additionally confident about it you know like yeah I ain't got to respond to this and uh, and again he failed the forefathers of battle rap concerning Philly there's not one Philadelphia's niggerous rapper that would have accepted charged up even being dropped I can't see Cassie or Cicero or, or Reed Dollars rolling over in their sleep like I ain't responding to that or the nigga Quilly running around right now so Drake read the atmosphere at the time then he released back to back and he was like alright I guess y'all ain't doing nothing what do I gotta do to make y'all rap right so for this here um, again, the confirmation, if the OVO camps are comfortable with the reception that they're going to get at the very least, because and I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of people want something a little bit more impressive. I'm not saying in this case, I'm just saying in general, because everybody didn't run with this notion, everything's mid, 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 mid. But it does feel like charged up part two to me personally. I agree. And yeah. I also, uh, Prince talked about the conspiracy I have, the conspiracy. Mm -hmm. I personally believe this is a trap leak from Drake. Drake has been wanting K Dot diss track, full diss record, to drop for a while now, ever since, you know, we reported here first and then, you know, yeah. other people ate it up and said it, you know, they got inside information. But we said it here first that like that feel like a like the like a trap like Pusha T infrared did. So now everybody's been playing footsies and I personally think and I'm gonna claim it here. I think this leak this record is a trap for yeah. Kendrick. I feel since Drake now knows that Kendrick has some heat, Night Night talked about the heart part six. Mm -hmm. I think that Drake is now trying to lure Kendrick out to drop that disc record. And this is what we have here with the Get Money track. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, again, it, it just, it, I'm going to be real with you all. Now, for the public that may say it's mid, I get where they're coming from. Because when I heard it, I just felt like it was a strong B+. Plus. You know, I think smoking Rick Ross with his own lyrical grade energy is very easy. You know, I don't think Rick Ross, I don't think he got a battle bone. <laughs> He's got several bones in his body. But I don't feel Rick Ross has, quote, unquote, a battle bone in his body. Um, I think Rick Ross lost the subliminal battles between him and T.I. Because T.I., my personal opinion, off the album King, which I think is one of T.I.'s greatest albums of all time, uh, behind trap music. But when um, T.I. dropped the track, I'm talking to you. And he told you, like, he just tore Rick Ross up on that, that third verse. Ross didn't have nothing for T.I. That was way back when, when Ross was really, really popping in the streets. And Tip went in there and took his top hat off and started, you dumb, you dummy, you big, fat, 
dummy. Like, he went on his ass on that one. And when I saw back then that he didn't really engage with T.I. like that, um, I don't. I definitely feel like Ross don't have nothing for Drake. I feel the only people yeah. who have something for Drake right. is Kendrick, Future, and Metro. I absolutely agree with you that I don't think anybody else has anything for Drake. I agree with Night Night. I believe that uh, uh, Kendrick has something fi fiery in, in the paint, the heart part six, and uh, a fiery, uh, damaging disc record towards Drake. I think this track that uh, Drake Camp leaked, I believe this is a track so that this record from Kendrick can drop and then Drake can make his next move. Uh, I think... Uh, this particular track was a B minus, C plus B minus. Duppy was a, a A minus to me. I know some people were hating on it later on at the Pusher drop the fiery track, uh, the story of Adidon, who was perfectly set up to try to destroy somebody like Drake. It was the perfect type of diss record for Drake. Some people in Drake camp want to try to lesser the tone of it. So to say that Duppy was more lyrical, Duppy was definitely poetic and lyrical. But Pusha T and Pusha T Camp engineered a disc record that will work for Drake against Drake. And I do think that Kendrick will, will go even further than that. I do think, again, this Get Money track from Drake, I feel is, again, this is a, a setup track to get Kendrick to come out and drop his disc record. Now, let's go to some of the things that were said here on the disc record. You know, uh, like Prince said, he you know he was throwing shots at uh, Rick Ross about Rick Ross has never really got on the uh, uh, the the top Billboard 100 without him. He dissed Future saying you you was able your first number one was from me. He was dissing Abel saying you do things for niggas that we do for bitches. He told Metro shut the fuck up and go make some beats. He was talking very spicy. Yeah, on this, this alleged this record, which we feel it is real. Look, I'm gonna tell you because you have to think about who, how he, how he moved around on the track. You know, I'm gonna tell you something about AI. Eager AI bros, they go right in and they make every rapper when they're dissing another rapper talk in the manner of Tupac. They saying names. Drake don't all the time say names when he's. If anything, a lot of times he's not saying names when he's dissing a lot of people. But we gotta keep it real here on this one. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you all. Uh, I think, again, I do feel this is charged up. I think they're going to wait to see what's in the water. They're going to be paying attention to how the Internet rolls because what they want, they want to be ahead of the, of the wave. They want to be ahead of the wave and they want people chasing it. Now, what did I say concerning Kendrick Lamar? I said, if you're going to attack Kendrick Lamar, you have to make fun of him. Make fun of the way he talks. Make fun of his height. Do things like that because... Kendrick Lamar is considered a serious artist publicly. Now, I've seen Kendrick Lamar troll and joke with his friend, Schoolboy Q. I think Schoolboy Q is actually a funny piece, uh, a dude himself. But how people revere Kendrick Lamar, he's, he's, he's nigga Mandela, right? So people's like, you know, he's, he makes music for black people to be freed, and he makes beautiful music. But if you look at somebody like Drake, Drake's natural reaction is like, I just feel like I'm better than him. His music's depressing and all this other stuff, even though Drake does the same thing himself when concerning, you know, breakup and makeup and all this stuff. So what he did do, he took in, he said, like, for instance, the play on steppers. How are you a big stepper when you wear a size seven, right? Start, keep jabbing at him, jabbing at him. Try to make him look like a cartoon character, right? That's what you're going to be doing in the battle. You're really rebranding your opponent in the public. You know, it's just one of those things you take like what Tupac did when he took Biggie Smalls from this, you know, this big nigga that will be robbing the iron horse in, in in Brooklyn and all this other stuff. And then he made him he turned him into Piggy Smalls with his Gemini humor and kept roasting and gesturing him. Tupac wasn't necessarily it wasn't like over. It was the same man of a dislike Nas. Hit Him Up is a roasting record. I always said that it's a roasting record. So Drake takes shots at. Kendrick Lamar physically. Now, here's the thing. After you didn't got that out the way, everybody didn't call him the five foot four giant. And again, like sitting that we are talking about, like Sin said, you know, she feels like this is a bait to see what Kendrick is possibly going to throw out there or who else is going to throw something out there that might have caught some strays as well. 
But I do feel also on the flip side, the same space, I do feel this is a charged up situation as well. They're going to wait and wait and wait and see. However, though, you know, moving forward, give it to Drake. You know, a lot of confidence I heard on this track. It's a lot of it's confidence. A lot of on confidence. It. And it also sounds like a bait track. People yeah. say, well, it's not mixed. Well, that's what leaks are for. Yeah. <laughs> In know? fact, there's some parts of the song where he's muting part of his lyrics. The engineer, the part of the lyrics were muted at the beginning. Right. And then also just to add to this, he also tried to diss K-Dot and say, you ain't part of the the big three, bitch. And you know why I'm ejecting uh, Cole out of this shit, too. Because he cried. And he said, you know what? Who's to be a part of the big three? Scissor. Travis yeah. and uh, t- Savage. Uh, okay, that's who he mentioned. So it does seem like yeah. a, a, a leak situation for yeah. a bait. Yeah, he's trying to catch a big fish and to, you know to release his dis- his disc record. He said, you, "You've been sitting on a record for four years, okay, four years, right?" And um, what was the other thing that he did in the track uh, that I thought was interesting? Uh, again, rhyme scheme. He felt confident. I'm big in Japan, so. He's actually talking his big money hove talk that I, I have no idea what J. Cole was doing. And I kind of felt Drake was going to give J. Cole some strays anyway, just off of bad PR. <laughs> <laughs> he said that K. Dot shit was whack. Now, oh. I would say there's people up here, y'all, y'all chit chatting. I get what y'all saying in the chat. No one is saying that this is the greatest diss record on earth. It does not equate to that. This seems like a bait. Leak. What they can't hear it. This from is us. definitely not. Shit, is it? Oh, is it? Is it a bad trend that they can't hear what we just said? No, no. But they're just saying their opinions. If you think yeah. it's shitty, that's fine. Is, yeah. We know this is not a duppy caliber disc record or a back to back because it's obviously a bait. It is trying to bait Kendrick Lamar to come out because the last time Drake tried to just come with just a rap record, he got as, his ass tore. As we stated. Years before, he yeah. got his ass tore up because push your teeth. No Diddy, sin. <laughs> no no diddy. diddy. No Puff Steam. Chill, sin. He got his butt tore up because. Chill. The fuck? <laughs> because, because in Wyoming, they was yeah. ready for him. And infrared was a yeah. setup just like, yeah. like that was. Yeah. So he's trying to be more methodical with what he's doing oh, now. That's, I'm glad you said that, sin. I'm glad you said that, you all. And again, remember, 4.30, 4.30, we're going to be on Patreon. We're going to listen to it again. We're going to have a listening party, and then we're going to just go ahead and continue to break down the lyrics. Now, when he said, don't talk about no switches, I wear all of my chains when I be in your city, but he kept egging top dog on, top dog on, top dog on, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm shooting, the whole thing is that I'm shooting at your boss. You know, because also by him going after top dog like that, not saying that that's their dynamic, but Drake does have a habit of sunning the lyrical prospector. Look what he did with Pusha T. I'm not dealing with Pusha T directly. I wrote these things for your boss. You're older than the nigga you're running behind. Drake, if people pay attention to concept things, it's like listening or if you read a Stephen King novel. He has a particular style of writing. I know people will say, yeah, that's right. Drake's ghost writers have a particular style of writing. I get you, Prince. Right. But here's the thing. Drake does like to exercise the same formula. I will son you. I'm going after your boss because I'm a boss. You know, I'm the boss. They said you asking for the boss. They sent me, dog. He's going to shoot through the wives. He's going to shoot through the yeah, girlfriend he mentioned thing. mentioned Kendrick Lamar's wife. Yeah, he what, said I'm yeah. moving around. It was a double entendre. I'm moving around with security like Whitney. And he, held, he hung on to it like Virginia Williams. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the only thing he does that I don't like, <laughs> and ahead. I think because he's trying to catch capture the magic that he did when he said uh, "girls tour." With me, yeah, that's your girl tour, or oh, yeah. yeah, you know, when he was dissing Meek Mill, where right. it worked very well with Meek Mill because Meek Mill is slow. He's well, dumb, you know. He's very dumb. Yeah. Uh, with Kendrick, he, he's a dumb black Neanderthal. Yeah, with Kendrick and, and people with the mind of Pusha T, who are already calculating people. First of all, they're intelligent. They're they're very intelligent. So, even if Kendrick gets mad about his wife Whitney being mentioned, he is still gonna come calculated. He's still gonna come prepared yeah. because Kendrick is no small fries. This is a big. <laughs> is that a double entendre? Right, set? right. <laughs> this, he's a big deal. Yeah. A big deal. Again, uh, I personally felt he was he helped save hip hop. When it came to the 20, uh, the 2010s, so Drake is coming going up against 
his biggest opponent is Kendrick because he could try to troll back Future and Metro and them and try to say, well, I make hits, <laughs> you know. Uh, but all those y'all, niggas make hits. Yeah, but y'all, yeah. y'all giving me y'all best years though, yeah. Yeah. and I still think that I'm the one on top. Like when he said in his in his leaked alleged diss record, right. I'm Michael Venn in now. Well, you know, so when well, he said, you know, what's a prince to a what king? What prince to a king? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what I said. Um, I do feel, you know, yeah, we do feel like um, we, we feel like this is a, a, a situation where uh, it's a it's a big trap. And, and listen, I'm gonna tell y'all something real quick. The new my Twitter got hacked. Oh, is that that's an AI diss? That's that. Okay, I'll say this again. The new oops, my Twitter got hacked. Is it was AI? Because what you got to remember, folks, these are think tanks behind these artists. Some of these artists got hundreds of co-writers behind the scenes, ghost production behind the scenes. They want their man or woman to look as fresh and fly and as victorious as possible. You know, some of the salient points that this particular disc was hidden on. Sounds a lot like what Drake would be doing at this yeah. point in time. Like when he talked about top and, and interscope sunning. Who comes up with a hook like and drop owning, and give me 50? Yeah, and owning uh, Kendrick. And like you said, look, they're going to claim it's AI. And if they want to do that, the OVO camp, they have every right to because we know this is a this is a trap <laughs> record. This is a bait and switch record. This is a leak record to try to get... Kendrick out there and to drop his 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 diss record. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's this basically what this is only for. And we again, we're gonna have a listening party t- on our Patreon at 4 30 p.m. And for people who are just coming in, we've already had some industry insiders say that Mickey Fax is working with Drake on a diss record. We have Night Night, uh, who who basically came in and said that Drake behind the scenes is trying to uh Make it hard for Metro and Future to make money off of We Don't Trust You and We Still Don't Trust You. So there's a lot to talk about and dissect before 4.30 p.m. on our Patreon. Then we also got Strategy King who works with Kanye West. Who took our Drake joke and trying to abuse Drake with it. (laughs) Strategy King is, oh my goodness, he's he's, He's a trip. Well, everybody that works with Kanye usually is. (laughs) So, <laughs> but he be in the check. Kanye sends his team in all the time, you all. So anyway, if y'all want to see y'all him, if y'all want to see Kanye y'all demos, just uh, get at Strategy King when y'all see him. Uh, listen, <laughs> he said Drake needed help. Listen, we're gonna get further into it, but I, I will say this: uh, when he said twenty versus uh, what is this a twenty v one uh, situation? Some of the similar stuff he did throw some shots at ASAP Rocky. I will say this though. Musically, though, um, the second disc, you know, the second disc is going to definitely have to, it's going to have to be knocking a lot more. I'm going to keep it gangster with y'all when we're rolling into the, you know, from spring into summer and all this other stuff. Like, it's, they really going to have to be knocking uh, on that particular note. Uh, like I said, interesting timing, too, because, uh, you know, rest in peace to the late, great uh, Rico Wade for, you know, founder of the Dungeon Family, responsible for Goody Mob, you know, CeeLo, Cujo, Andre Three Stacks, and, you know, that bleeds over into, the, ironically, the likes of Future, who's Dungeon Family second generation. So, Kalidio and Future's in, he, he kind of got some things to deal with today. Uh, you know, but anyway, this being the case, um, I had to see, we're going to see exactly where it goes. I think this is, um, this is a recentering track too, by the way, because Cole made it so messy. <laughs> Cole made it easy. Y'all call it a track mid, but seven minute drill made it, made, gave, uh, Drake confidence to do a, a leak record to try to beat, uh, uh, bait, uh, Kendrick Lamar to come out with his diss record. So, and, and the only thing that make Drake really comfortable of, of taking this approach is, right. is the uh, mouth delivery from Cole. But then also, you know, Cole being on We Still Don't Trust You. And this is not a dig towards J. Cole. So the uh, J. Well, Drake did that. Yeah. He said, I don't Drake know. Drake is the I, one yeah. <laughs> that allegedly. Did back kick did. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> uh, look, I don't know what it is. Cole is not having the best week right now. I keep saying that. you. Drake are. isn't either. I think Drake got a better shot than Cole, honestly. Like, well, I'm going to be honest it's, with it's, you. But it's his battle. It ain't Cole paddle. It's I, like what we said. Like that was mostly about Drake. We said that from the beginning. It well, wasn't even on. really about Cole. Cole is the guy <laughs> that get, he got peer pressure to smoke weed one time. 
I, man, I really didn't want to do that. I just think Drake yeah. waited. Instead of this is what happens when you, you manipulate backwards, though. I think instead yeah. of trying to court uh-huh. Cole, you know, Drake is going to have to try to John Wick it on his own. And also for people who talk about who's innocent, there's nobody innocent here. Um, you got some nerd podcasters trying to say, why did ASAP Rocky go after Drake? That is that. This is just getting corny. No, dumbasses. Drake had dissed ASAP Rocky on his track with Yachty, and he dissed Rihanna on her loss, and he dissed Rihanna again on For My Dogs. Again, I don't care because this is not, I don't know none of these people personally. But if y'all gonna go on the mic and talk this hip hop shit, know what be, you're talking about. Know what you're talking that's, about. That's, that's what we're gonna say. I'm, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not here to give you tips. So uh, look, uh, I'm about to open up the phone lines. I don't have, I don't have too much to say about it. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Uh, I think, you know, again, if the OVO camp wants to accept the response from the general public, because remember, Cole only withdrew. He didn't say I was feeling bad first. He said, I put it on the internet and the internet gave me a negative response. And then I needed Pepto Bismol at night. And K Dot also yeah. possibly talked to him. Right. So I, I feel like this if, if Cole would have put the track out and people would have been like, yo, this track is smoking, I think Cole would have kept moving forward. My personal opinion. You know, I don't, you know, eh, you know, and I get it. What Cole does is on par with the brand mental health, mental illness and all this other stuff. And, you know, I'm, you know, we're free earth bitches. Everybody's a free earth bitch. Let's all have sex in the mosh pit. Fine. Moving on. All right. But I, I do feel, and I know you want to, you want to say something to real quick. I just added to your oh, point. Oh yeah, go ahead. It's just so important just to say that and even what you're talking about. Let's mm. let's stop with the kitty gloves. Thank you. Everybody is culpable in this in this situation to an extent. Right. Now, I don't know who is the origin of it. Again, Drake perspective is and from this leaked disc record too. Mm. All you niggas fake. I took all you starving niggas out of the hood. I put a little bit of money in your pockets, and y'all came you. back to fight uh, the bite the hand that feed uh, fed y'all. Yeah. Kendrick, coming from the perspective, yeah. I'm one of the chosen. I'm 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 chosen by the universe and by God. Mm. I didn't, I never needed you. I have three classic albums. You only or or featured one time. On a uh, good kid, Mad City. You're not on a, not, not on none of my other shit, and and that's his perspective. ASAP Rocky, like I bagged the bitch that you always wanted. You look up to Rihanna. I got her now. Sit down. Leave me alone. I never did anything personal to you. Abel's perspective is, you try to get me in a bad contract. I helped you with. Uh, one of your greatest album that is really I wrote more of it. Again, this is his perspective. I wrote and did most of the work on uh. Th- oh no, not thank me later. What's the second one? Take care Take later. Care. Yeah. Take care. Right. Yeah. Take care. You talking about the one where he's dressed like a, a Cadillac salesman? Right. And Abel said, I, if I would ever, if I would have fucked with you more than that, you would have drained my soul. I'm, I'm glad I didn't sell my soul away. So they all, all these guys got their well, perspectives. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm going to be real with you all. Everything aside from Drake, like we can we can talk about the Quentin Mueller and all this other stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm you guys, I'm always look at it like a realist. At the end of the day, a lot of niggas did have to stand next to his spotlight to get shine. That is the biggest shit talking point Drake has on everyone in this particular battle. He's really I'm going to be real with you. We got to be honest. Everyone that let's like, I know people say, well, you know, he may be a shitty person behind the scenes. I don't know none of these niggas, okay? And I'm gonna be real with you. From some of the stuff I've heard from folks that are tap dancing out of the industry, fucking someone's girlfriend or wife is probably one of the lesser charges, no CTG, one of the lesser charged situations that these rappers and singers have done to each other. Y'all just recently saw Trey Songs had to settle with, with a $25 million lawsuit, right, for the sexual assault situation. So please spare me on the whole thing of uh, fornication in the rap industry, right? But I'm just, I just want to put that, that is the biggest highlighted point that Drake gets to walk around is that, look, I touched a lot of you niggas that got issues with me. But Future was already buzzing before Drake got on. You got to remember, too, to people's point in the chat, some people he did make hot, period. And then some people, no, he jumped on their buzz, and they and some of them became just as big as, as him. 
you know, but Future already was having uh, buzzing in Atlanta and already was building up a, a, a really good portfolio. And that's and why I always say there's really not, I'm going to be real with you, there's nothing he can really say to Future. I like that, that battle, I keep telling people, Drake going against Future, especially the, the ridiculous run that him and Metro have just had recently, there's not much he can say there. Now, the other stuff, he can flex his muscles about whether people believe it or not. Guess what people see when they get on the Internet? Guys, I want you to support this man right here. This guy here, he's going to be huge. He's going to be big. Now, I personally feel all of these niggas are opportunists. We've seen it when Jay-Z jumped on the Jeezy remix. Young Jeezy was already buzzing in Atlanta. That, he was that's buzzing what in I'm saying. South yes. Carolina, Memphis, Tennessee. You're right about that. Trapper die, Trapper die too. Here come Jay-Z. Oh, oh, cocaine. Right? He came down there. And at that point in time, that also resuscitates the brand. Now, the problem is, after you go stand next to niggas, which I actually think this more than likely may be the case with Drake, after you stand next to niggas, niggas can't stand you personally. Right, and also... also <laughs> I just, that's all I'm thinking. We, of course, we're going to throw K-Dot in there, too. I don't think Kendrick ever needed Drake. We all understand. No. I just said that Drake only featured on one track. It was a great... They had great chemistry on Poetic Justice, but Kendrick never needed Drake and Future never needed Drake. Wait. But but half of the new new niggas in that industry had got a Drake stimulus package that you gotta, so you gotta talk about that he is the one why why people are even right, looking at them. But no, yeah. of course Future yeah. and Kendrick yeah, they're already on yeah. some other level and yeah. some other shit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fuck them bitches. <laughs> bitches. Right, okay. And then here's the other side of the game. To the point where Sid and I agree on this. This is this is great. You know, this is fantastic. I'm gonna be honest with you. I listen, again, if the OVO camp accepts the response from the internet and you don't do that, my Twitter got hacked shit that it was AI. I will say this, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the most appropriate response to Kendrick Lamar's like that verse. Again, if the industry niggas don't industry, I'll say that again. If y'all don't pull that whole shit that, okay, guys, it was AI, my Twitter got hacked, all my dick pics. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. If this is what it is, be comfortable with the setup. That's all we want. Now, um, well, before I transition back to the previous one, what are you about to say? Yeah, claim the sassy disc record. There were yes. some good things in it, but it's definitely not all the way put together. It's, yeah. Also, I want to say this. It's not a body record. Abel and Drake needed each other So at the beginning. So Kendrick didn't need Drake. Future didn't need Drake. You know, these guys would have been big no matter what. Oh, I got it. I got it. But I gotta, I gotta Abel at the beginning, Drake do have to be careful with that because both of those guys needed each other because Abel was able to, yes. you know, thank me later was okay, but take care really impacted the culture. Even if people, some people well, think. Well, thank me later was a Degrassi soundtrack. Yeah, I didn't like thank me later. Yeah. It's the only first beginning album from Drake I don't like. Everything else after that I liked until he, you know, messed up recently. But. Take Care really solidified Drake because it influenced R&B girls. It influenced yeah. R&B guys. Some you Walker. had Chris Brown coming out doing the re, uh, uh, mix, his own R&B version of some of the tracks on Take Care. So Abel, Drake, Abel and Drake needed each other. Abel just needed the opportunity to at least get his foot in the industry so he can get a haircut. Right. So he could decline that contract that Drake had and move on and trust himself, which he did. And he's one of the biggest pop stars ever. In recent in recent times, so you can't take that away from. Him. So, but when you're doing disc records, you're not trying to do nuances. Well, so, yeah. like like Prince mm -hmm. said, Drake' point yes. is to not be nuanced He's with not. the truth. His point is the flex. I flex because I gave people hits, and that's where I'm gonna try to take the disc records and and my sassy uh, clap back at everybody. There you go. Now, here's the other side of it. Now, I was in Atlanta. I was growing up. I grew up in Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen. So. You guys may say, because some folks say, oh, you, you have a bias towards Kendrick. No, actually, my bias was in more so in favor of Future just because it's a just kind of more of a vibe thing, right? And I think Kendrick Lamar has the strongest discography out of this class, right? If you discount, I would put second would be Big Crit. Again, I feel Big Crit has a stronger discography than J. Cole, but I don't want Dreamville niggas uh, shooting their plantains at me. You better stop because right? Dreamville niggas, you already call them Nyquil. They're going to come out with some disc records towards Dark Crimes. <laughs> well, I throw a flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. <laughs> All right, but anyway, that's another story. Now, where Sin and I point 
is salient is that how certain material ages like fine milk. Look, ASAP Rocky is on record saying, yo, you know, Drake, if it wasn't for Drake, man, he did me a look, it helped my career. Like nobody would mess with me. And Drake, he didn't even ask for no money, nothing. ASAP Rocky is in an interview talking about how much the snow walker has breathed that ice cold breath into his lungs no diddy or twerking ass meek mill secondly of course there's the weekend i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for drake the only two niggas that really didn't say that was kendrick lamar he said yo it was a good look you know i appreciate him and future down in atlanta future said yeah man it was a good look you know it is what hey, it is future say yeah years ago early in drake and future's relationship he said i think i make better music than drake <laughs> <laughs> let's give so, it up for future man he's already <laughs> that, confident. That is funny to me i love it though and also, i like put, that don't put thought <laughs> academics all these other guys we don't have no solder team love all yeah. these guys yeah. music we're just repeating their respect their perspectives yeah. of why they don't like each other yeah. or why they don't like drake and why drake don't like them yeah. and then also what some insiders or just people who really listen to the lyrics they have like been, to message us have been telling us but just yeah. to go back to abel abel still is a little bit more different than asap because asap has always been grateful towards drake up until recently Cause when Drake first got, because of the whole Rihanna thing. Yes, that's, when, all, when that's, Drake, that's all that's about. When Drake first got mad about yeah. Rihanna, ASAP was like, "I still love Drake. Drake has always that's, been good that's to that's me." That's a Scorpio nigga. But then, <laughs> brother, he don't love. <laughs> so like, I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio Once you didn't bag the woman he wanted, nigga, it's not friendly. <laughs> you took the woman of his the, dream, his, the woman of his dreams. He was on the shop saying, "I would have have wanted to be with Rihanna. My mother wanted me to be with Rihanna. My father wanted yeah. me to be with Rihanna. Yeah, like LeBron this, wanted me to be with Rihanna." ASAP talking like this nigga wanted to be his best man. The whole world wanted me to be Rihanna. So, yeah, he don't fuck, fuck that with ASAP Rocky yeah, no more. Fuck that nigga. But ASAP, up until that point, was still trying to be grateful to Drake. He was like, Drake, I love you, I love you. But Drake said, fuck that. Bitch. And then that's when, on her loss, he talked shit about Rihanna. And, and ASAP was like, look, get a man, Drake. Yeah. And then, <laughs> when Drake went further with it on For My Dog, And he talked about planes and crashes and shit. <laughs> now, that's what, it, it, it elevated it for ASAP to say, I want to see a fuck nigga bleed. And just yeah. to go back to the Abel situation, Drake is still 50-50. Even though uh, Drake gave Abel an opportunity, Abel still... Sounded like Michael Jackson. He gave Drake direct, uh, direction from his perspective. Again, this is Abel's perspective because I don't know these people. Mm. Abel's perspective is, yes, you put me on. But if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have Take Care. And Take Care... Is the first album that besides took his him serious right besides his mix uh, uh mixtape so far gone yeah before besides so far gone yeah take care solidified like, you know me Drake and the culture so he could go on and make them other albums that he worked with with other people I, I messed with so far gone I really did I, I loved so far gone I, I and honestly at the time I didn't even know what Drake looked like. I did not know he was Barack Obama's nephew so I didn't know no at the time I did I was like oh shit. Because you know the you know I'm, I'm gonna be honest with black conspiracy theorists niggas you know they was oh man they trying to whitewash us I said what happened you know uh, they said like, yeah they got Barack Obama and then now they got this nigga Drake <laughs> <laughs> the gang turning light skin <laughs> light skin responses yeah they said they they got they, they was like this it's Barack Obama Drake and then you heard about this other nigga I said who J Cole I hate these light skin niggas well you know what with Cole they I never heard no one refer to Cole as a well, light skin I'm talking about when he had his cut he had his low hair cut no, I'm just saying up until and, recently when he did this, when he grew that he grew, he grew that shit out when he apologized that's the first time I saw a lot of people call him light skin that was true <laughs> What, what, why are y'all saying like are, are you saying light skinned niggas can only be civilized? I don't know. I don't know. But um But it was some it, it was some huggy bear shit though. It but, was some uh, huggy bear shit. It but really listen, was. I remember that. So when I first heard Drake so far gone, Houston Land and Vegas, up until for the most part, it was one of my favorite tracks. And I, I love the ambient vibe and I said, Yo, I'm, I'm messing with this. I'm messing with this kind of DJ Screw, Brian Eno, a little bit of organized noise energy. I'm messing with all of this. This shoddy energy, right? Then he dropped, uh, what is it, Thank Me Later? Didn't like that, but I like Take Care. I knew I was worried when I saw the album cover. 
And I, I was worried when I saw that Itchy Sketch album cover. I liked everything else uh-huh. all the way up until Darko Lane. I liked Darko Lane, but yeah. after that, Darko Lane's been a little iffy for me. But well, you know, Views wasn't really that bad, too. Views you know? was actually yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, because I had to go. You, Western you know. Roads and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't we work it out? Because, baby. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> going back to this disc record, though, he was trying to call Rick, Rick Ross an old ass bitch. Well, he is 48. <laughs> he said, You pushing oh. 50 and you're hating on me. Well, Ross, uh, and, 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 and let's be real. Can, can we can we be honest? Um, at, at a certain point in his career, after he made money, I really believe after Rick Ross was able to buy all of that that greasy uh, wing stop shit, you know, I felt Rick Ross kind of got lazy. Okay, I, 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 I think it was like, too many lemon pepper wings. I think the yeah. last couple of years, yeah, he's he's been. Um, to your point, Drake has smoke. Rick Ross on every feature. This is yeah. and also Rick Ross. Don't add us. Don't get him mad at us. This is all personal opinion. I think after a while, by by the time you got to the young class of MCs, I think you you got comfortable and that's yeah. fine. Yeah. You know, you already was set. But I think uh, I don't ever feel with Future though. I, I never know. felt with Future or K Dot that Drake just smoked them. Like with K Dot, um, with K Dot ASAP and Drake, I think there was a debate between Drake. And Kendrick of who had the better verse. They both smashed it on fucking problems. I am Kendrick Lamar. Yes. I love that verse. Kendrick killed it. I ain't gonna lie. I, I messed with that verse. And then you, we was talking about uh, yeah. stay up at the stars and put the beat on. You know what? Yeah, that was smooth. They both were the equal. Poetic niggas. No, they both were equal to me until yeah. he said long dick nigga. I don't know why, but when. It's when, just the way he said it. When Drake do the long dick nigga shit, it's right. just, I don't like it. I, I get what you say. But it, they it were just weird. both really good You said it's a little bit too side nigga-ish. It's a little bit too raggedy. It's yeah. like he, he took the girl. It, it's, I get what you're saying. The transition to the panties wasn't that smooth. The long dick talking shit. <laughs> that talker. Uh, I'm a long dick stroker. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie. When he did, like, uh, he said, I put the Beatles on, got you in the star. I thought that was some fly shit. Right. You and know? I thought K, uh, K Dot, you know, killed it. So, you know, um, K Dot and Drake has been having this competition against each other of who's the better MC right. for a very long time now. We can't agree that ASAP, the nigga nigga, the nigga 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 nigga, the nigga ASAP nigga. ASAP made me nigga, laugh nigga, though, nigga, cause nigga. ASAP stupid. He was like, cause I'm the nigga, the nigga nigga, the, the nigga, nigga, nigga nigga, can you feel? But uh, we, then he said, but at least a nigga nigga rich. But, yeah. <laughs> but he was the best dressed nigga in the video though. Well, he's a he's yeah. a he's a fashion guy. He's a flashy Libra. So I don't you yeah. know uh, all all the guys I do think ASAP Rocky and Future have the best I, I uh, with him, yeah. uh, style when it comes to dress clothes. Oh, we forgot two chains was in that song. Yeah, he did a dope ass chorus. Yeah. I love bad bitches. That's yeah. pro- my fucking problem. That's when two chains was in his prime. <laughs> Because, you know, when he did the I'm different track, I know, like, all right, fuck it. We getting all, like, all, all over the place. Yeah. Set the record, record straight. straight. Come on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, that was a great album, too. I think that's his best work. But uh, in the South Side joint. But we, well, let's get back to the track, yeah, because y'all know how we can do it. We'll talk about hip hop all day. Um, I think it's a good, it's a good entry on some. I, I don't feel, I feel it's, it's like, it's like WWE. You know, The Rock is in the ring, and then you hear the Stone Cold Steve Austin music drop, or maybe it will be the reverse. Because people may feel like uh, Drake got more of the flashier rock energy, and then Kendrick is Stone Cold Steve Austin. You get what I'm saying? He just comes in at that particular time. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, but I will say this, though. Rick Ross doesn't have anything. All right? And I'm, I'm going to be... You like because he was in the car listening to Like That. No offense to Ricky, but you did look old and tired. <laughs> you know, he you couldn't know. even smoke the guy that told him that his watches were fake. I do think the old old men. Yeah, so sit at, down. So sit down. Let's let, sit this one out. Let the 2010. Yeah. Uh, late 30s. Yes. Deal with this, Ross. I do want Ross to sit out. I think you had a, a decent run, uh, but you have to be real, nigga. Uh, Drake has given you some of your finer singles. Now, I'm not saying for me personally. I fucked with Ross on the Southern shit. You know, I love the mixtape shit. With Lil Wayne. Yeah, the, the 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 hood rich shit. I fucked with Ross when he was on those tips that he didn't need no Drake. He didn't need a Jay Z. You know, these boys also to to the point of the chat though. 
Drake listens to a lot of shit. So he was a fan of these niggas too, by the way. So he definitely wanted to be over there. He was excited about hip hop. That's why he was over there in the West Coast, you know, with YG and all them niggas, the game and Rick Ross and T.I. and all that. If he could, if Plies was still rapping, I'm sure Drake would have shown his ass up on a Plies mixtape. Right. Do, uh, uh, Dom's also in the chat. Shout out to Trinidad and Tobago. She said, all the boomers stay out of this, <laughs> right? All the boomers that yeah, that's discrimination. Yeah, been trying to push his big head on it. You already got a, a piece of Drake flesh. You and Pusha T did the damn thing. Right. Stand down. Let's see what Drake and his peers do. Let's see what yeah. Abel does. Future. Yeah. Kendrick. I'm ready. Let the niggas have their Sankofa. Why y'all old niggas y'all, trying to force yourself yeah. in the young niggas? Y'all acting like controlling mothers. <laughs> Uh, the father's been let them boys go out there and fight. Yeah, let them go out there and do their thing. Yeah. All right, y'all go do something else. Now, here's my other thing, too, to, to the point about Rick Ross. The reason why I usually feel, uh, as of late, you know, Drake mostly smoked Rick Ross on a lot of tracks. Because I, the, the best I've seen Ross come alive is when he's with his peers, Jay-Z and Nas. Jay-Z and Nas with Ross, like, he got great chemistry with them. You know, like when they did accidental murders with Nas, that shit was fried. The twin, what is it, the two tower joint them niggas did? I feel like either Jay-Z and Ross or Ross Ooh. and Nas should cut an EP together. You're right. Rick Ross with Jay-Z, Rick Ross with Nas, and yeah. Rick Ross with Lil Wayne, they all sound fast. Better than that shit that Usher was talking about. What? Diddy, Jay-Z, and Usher. <laughs> Nigga, I don't want to hear that shit. I would never want to fucking listen to a group with Diddy, Jay-Z, and Usher in it. I'm sorry. Stop it. Now, Usher... Uh, a ludicrous and Lil John guess, yeah. but not them niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, that's the other thing that made me mad about Usher. Like Ludacris kept saying, Lil John, Usher, guys, let's do an album together. But Usher gonna tell us that shit like it was some Rice Krispies. Hey, I'm not getting excited about that shit. What the fuck did he gonna do? Also, Elliot Wilson line ass is saying the bait uh, leak is fake again. We're going to go, we'll go with the industry story. Did that, we talk about that at the beginning of the stream, though? Right. That's the new, my Twitter got hacked. We go with the industry story that everyone is saying that from the industry that, oh, it's fake. But other industry insiders, uh, the weird ones on the ground are saying it's real. Well, the theater of the absurd says the diss is real because they are removing it from YouTube. Right. Okay. So let's yeah. so let's stop. L let's be real now. But we're gonna be listening to it on our Patreon. Everybody uh, at four thirty p.m. come to our Patreon where you can listen to the uh, uh, <laughs> tracks with us and have some fun. We may even play some Daft Punk. <laughs> Music's got me feeling so real. All right. So uh, look, I told you guys that that is the new. My Twitter got hacked. Also, what do you think about Drake uh, allegedly in the fake diss record? Uh, mentioning fake Drake. Whitney uh, Kendrick's uh, That's wife, Drake. That's what know? he normally does. That's why I feel psychologically, it's it, to me, psychologically, it feels like Drake. It, it, these are the things he usually shoots at as far as targets in, in beefs. Since back to back. Yeah. yeah. I also was thinking about even when he was sitting on records, you know, uh, I can't remember what track right now, but when he was like, you know, I'm looking at the guys, you know, um, some of them being Fugazi, mm -hmm. but they don't know that their wife or their girlfriend is looking at me. And he said, I, you know, I basically spared them a terrible <laughs> loss. <laughs> he know? said I spared them. I might, I spared, I spared them. My dick spared them. <laughs> There's a long, my, my dick didn't break up their family. Long dick talker. <laughs> <laughs> look, maybe, maybe, look, maybe, maybe there's a situation. Look, you all, I know some people look, fellas, we gotta be honest, you know, Sometimes if you make your friend's girlfriend laugh a little too much and it's unintentional, all of a sudden you and your friend got static. He got he got a bit a little bit of static with you. So for Drake, some people's like, well, what did he do? I can actually see on another side of the game, especially with the reverse colorism that goes on in hip hop, the idea that a light skinned nigga, like Future says, is jogging through pussy. Like they claim that Drake is. He has a notorious reputation for this. Lil Wayne wrote about this nigga in his memoir. All right. That's how notorious Hugh Hefner Drake is when it concerns your girl. Right. So that could that could really be the case that all of these other niggas are tired of him. But also, yes, for people who are asking, we have the entire disc record. Let me tell you. So <laughs> after I showed Prince the disc record, right. he was listening to it. I said, Prince, 
download that shit because OVO going to remove it. I said, download that fucking uh, yeah. so-called AI disc record. Because there's a bunch of fake AI Drake shit <laughs> right. up. Well, I said, download it because the OVO camp is going to get rid of it. So everybody come on our Patreon at 4.30 p.m. But also, we're going to open up the phone lines because Night Night want to talk about from his perspective. Uh, he is telling Thought Crimes that you know, uh, Drake behind the scenes is trying to get Future mm-hmm. and Metro Boomin uh, uh, to your not picture, to picture. not be able to uh, make any money off of. We don't uh, trust you, and we still don't trust you. Uh, they, you know, uh, uh, Night Night said that Drake is trying to go to the legal system to slow down Future and Metro. So what are you trying uh, to do what, rock the vote shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> and also, do, what type of shit is that? And also, somebody else, a part of the think tank, has also alleged that Mickey Fat. And it's supposed to be helping. I, I used to listen to that nigga's mixtape. Drake a with a, a disc record. Yeah, I heard he's doing great things in real estate. Mickey Fax is connected to Lupe. Yeah, they, they, they them two. They twin, run with each other. Yeah, they two twin dragons. Well, you know, Lu, uh, Lupe has had a history of not liking Kendrick Lamar. So, oh man, I don't know. I love you, Lupe, but you know, you sound like you may be a part of it. Uh, caller, uh, you're here with Thought Crimes. What's your thoughts on the alleged? A uh, disc record that was leaked or AI record that was leaked. Fake Drake. Yep, this is Night Night, aka Madman Ninety. I don't know what type of witchcraft you got, Night Night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to you, uh, Night Night. Talk to us about what you think about the track, and then going into that um, great information you was telling us about about what Drake was doing with with legalities towards Future and Metro. Drake is playing that. Uh, Drake is playing the art of war. You know he's playing the um uh, uh uh the forty eight laws of power. He, he you know he he's trying to uh, sun uh, feature and Metro Boomin and all his enemies because you remember he mentioned Interscope Records. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, so are you saying and that don't you forget? Fi- go 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 ahead go ahead. And and don't forget he's uh he's uh very connected with the the guy. That uh um that own the UMG something like that. Oh, you know, Lucian um, Green. The dude, the, yes, yes, yes. And then Kendrick Lamar even said, you know, don't forget that on the song with uh Kodak Black, Kendrick Lamar uh, uh mentioned um uh um uh, you got money or something like that uh on the song Silent Hill. You know, he's saying that he. You know, because he's saying that you funny, dog. Piggy boo. You know, because uh, you hiding behind your money, dog. You know, he actually talking about Drake. Because Drake what, what has money that, uh, and power, but he don't have respect. Well, okay, I, I get what you say, uh, Night Night. Uh, what What is it that they want from this nigga Drake? Well, can I say that real quick? Real, uh, what, what, what happened? Something happened? Yeah, uh, uh, just to say this real quick about um, Kodak Black. Kodak Black was very upset with Drake mm-hmm. because he said they were supposed to do a collab album instead of 21 Savage. He said he brought this yeah. idea yep. up okay. to uh, Drake a long time ago where he That's said, nice. you know, and Drake told him, oh, yeah, we're going to do a collab album. So uh, Kodak Black started, uh, got upset with Drake after he did the uh, record or the album, I mean, That's with 21 right. Savage, just to give you the good, background on that. Good for Kodak and his three wishes. All right. <laughs> uh, nobody wanted to hear He's that. a fellow Gemini, too. Yeah, I know. People, I people, people, people nobody wants forgot, to hear you know, a Drake. He's a fellow Gemini like myself. I know. I yeah, know. Go ahead. Nobody wants to hear a Drake and Kodak album. I right? mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah, let's, uh, I mean, come on. You know that. Well, listen to wait, wait, With you, Night Night, you wouldn't want to listen to it. <laughs> come on, Sid. That's enough. Let's move on for it. Nah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, go nah. ahead, uh, uh, Night Night. Uh, you Go ahead and finish answering the, uh, the question uh, Prince had for you. Oh yeah, yeah. What is it that they? Yeah. Uh, what what does what does Kendrick want from this nigga? You know, from your perspective, what? Because we we get it with the other guys. It, from from what we understand, um, it, it, you know, Kendrick and and Drake have not shared the same woman. They are in completely different time zones, and and damn near sometimes subcultures within rap. What, what does Kendrick uh, want with this nigga? Kendrick uh, want Drake out of the uh, rap game. And the same thing with um, uh, uh, Drake. Do you remember on the song called Away From Home, mm-hmm. he was talking about Dr. Dre loved him or, or, or uh, sent him home. You know, he said that, you know, who, who's the one that controlling uh, 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 UGM or uh, uh, UMG, UG. something like right. that, you know. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned that. You know, he, you know he's saying that 
I uh, hope you be, you know, uh, uh, was gonna retire your stuff. Uh, you ain't co- Kobe Bryant enough. He said that on the uh, uh, story about my brother. People don't really talk about that. And he's sitting here sending threats to Kendrick Lamar too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this, this you know, Ken, you know, Drake is Drake is a terrorist to me, man. He's a terrorist. <laughs> he said, "Go back home to Canada." Might, might he said, "Go it. back home to Canada and stay there." You know, and be banned from America. Cause he's sitting here uh, 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 flexing his money and his power. And, you know, you know, and uh, subliminal throwing out threat to Americans. All right. <laughs> Okay. Night night, you have it on record. Night night said this motherfucker is a terrorist. That's funny. A <laughs> foreign that invader. Funny. <laughs> he said, "I'm not even from around here. How y'all let me run it down here?" Well, night night, you uh, remember that exactly. night night? Exactly. Can you go into please yeah. what you were saying in the chat about? Because we, uh, you know, Prince and I don't know nothing about this. You said uh, that there's some legalities going on. Or Drake is trying to undercut Future and Metro. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's not only him, but Kendrick Lamar and a lot of other people that are going against him. You know, he's trying to uh, uh, um, stop their money flow, mm-hmm. or he's trying to uh, uh, get money off of them. You feel that? I mean, everything that, that they drop something, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, so you feel, the, so they're feeling, uh, l- let's just feel the American niggas, right? The, the ADOS FBA yeah. niggas. They're feeling this outsider is trying to impose a Magna Carta style like tax onto the United Nigger Kingdom. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Drake, Drake trying to, um, you know, uh, that's why he mentioned him. He, he, you know, he's saying that I'm more big enough, you know, uh, um, um, how to, you know, he said something like, how the F you got F for me that I have more money than y'all. You know, I have more money, you know, and I have more power than y'all. He's flexing. He's saying that, you know, I could buy your contract. Do you remember on the first person shooter, he said that, he said, if you're a public up to sell, you know, if I buy the whole thing, he's talking yeah, about I Kendrick. I, I did that. I, I, do rem- I, I do remember that. Um, it, but again, as if Drake owns his masters and if his, you know, quote unquote, $500 million, 400 to $500 million say it loan from UMG if he actually is as free as he's flexing to be. Also, Night Night, I do have As some... an artist, to be honest with you, I... if that's a real thing. But mm-hmm. if that's not true and, you know, his contract comes out, because remember, uh, this is what was argued, too, uh, against Drake by the likes of Pusha T. Right. One question I do have for you, Night Night, because that is a perspective or narrative that can work when you're looking at the pair class. But uh, what would you say <laughs> if someone say, well, uh, uh, it's not really Canada versus America with Drake because Baby owns a large part of That's the pie. That's what you to say, Baby owns yep. Drake. Uh, yeah, uh, I was about uh, to say uh, that too. Jay yep. Prince owns a exactly. lot. Exactly. These, these, you know, these are guys from the United States. So, what would you say uh, from that perspective? Well, Kendrick could say the same thing to him. Well, actually, you no, know, he could throw it, that right. Yeah. yeah, it would be. It would be. Listen, I mean, how he's moving, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, Kendrick could throw that right back to him. You know, he's saying that uh, Interscope owned you or something like that. Uh, 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 he bringing up Top Dog, TDE, you know, uh, trying to squash shit and all that. Man, Kendrick ain't squashing nothing, man. And then he's saying something about uh, uh, you been holding on your, you know, what's you've been holding on a diss track for four years. All right, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kendrick ain't scared, man. He will put that out. But, he, you know, he's uh, um. He knows uh, uh, Drake tactics. I have one And the thing is about... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Night-Night. Yeah. And I want to mention uh, Mickey Fax, because uh, uh, he did say something about he's he's involved. And I believe so, because uh, he be on Twitter taking subliminal jabs and talking shit about Kendrick. Mickey and Fax, he's from uh, New York. Listen. Yeah. Well, okay, listen. Straight I, up, look, New York niggas always you. try to. I'm sorry, I'm go be ahead. Be honest with you. Look, I, even from the legends, everybody is was either from New York. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna let the New York callers call in. But even the New York podcasters, they are either were in favor of Cole or they're coaching Drake. I do notice that there's like a um, there's an energy. It's both. Well, it's well both. Lupe is from Chicago. It's, just yeah. to throw him in there real quick, and he never liked uh, Kendrick Lamar. But it's still, and Mickey it, it, Fax it, yeah. and, and Lupe are really close. Well, we know what that's about with Lupe. Come yep, on, yep, they let's, are. Let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, Lupe. Jealous of Kendrick we, we, we Lamar. That's about with Lupe. I love Lupe. He's another hater. 
Yeah. Lupe <laughs> is another one that has a very strong discography. I, I was there with the Revenge of the Nerd series, the science, weird science project uh, freestyle that he did. I think as a technician, I don't think Eminem, nobody you can mention as a technician that can mess with Lupe Fiasco. Okay. However, yeah, the, that's true. Lupe yeah. Fiasco, <laughs> respectfully, he can be did, very anally retentive. He can be, a, a, let's just say, he can be a very agitating Aquarius. He's very, okay? very, he can, I can tell yeah. he's difficult to be around. Right. Like, because, yeah, I was in his chat one time. I didn't say nothing. Sometimes I'd be in these niggas' chats. I just like to see what's going on. I'm not saying anything. But they were asking Lupe Fiasco. This is how scratchy and itchy he can be at times. They said, hey, man, Lupe, you know, what's your favorite rap album of the year? And he just went off into his. Nigga, I don't be asking me I, about no what I rap. rap for right, a living. Right, right. I don't listen to the right. shit. Oh, yeah. just go stop on people <laughs> all the time. Like, oh, yeah, nope. Speak on Lupe Fiasco. This, you know what I mean? Like, this man on Twitter lying and trying to backtrack and trying to say, oh, yeah, I didn't apologize. Not and then his butt buddy, oh, it's got Mickey Fag uh, trying to say, oh, no, you know, that ain't true. Louis, I love here. you, but you did apologize. But I, I want to <laughs> say this, you all. I want to say this to my Chicago niggas, right? I think Lupe in hip-hop has earned the right to be delusional and lie. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, let's be real. He, he gave you two classics back-to-back, -back, right? And he tried to go up against Barack Obama before the world of black niggas caught up sorry, to what he though, was saying. But some of the things Lupe got, he deserved because why did you trust on white boys? The Alex Jones, they just flipped on black people. Now they're racist. That, well, because the black white people, boys played Lupe. Right. I, I know he made the mistake of Kanye. And it's a, a lot of niggas from Chicago do that. Like, okay, the black niggas don't want to hear what I'm saying. I'm going to run over here to where the alt-right crackers are. Right? And it, it is that is his fault. But also, right. Alex Jones was lying, too. But Alex, he was lying. Lying, I'm a friend of the people. But, and then as soon as he started to these niggers, we got to get them out the Alan country. Jones stole from black truth tellers who started the movement. Yeah, but let's be real. Along with woke white people but, like Mark Twain. And just, yeah. I, I just have one question, though, for a night night. Just real quick night night. Yeah. Some of the claims that was in this so-called fake leaked uh, disc record about Top Dog or people in Kendrick's camp. The drop and give me 50 sounds to, like Drake, though. Trying to, like, uh, it is Drake. say they on the phone. <laughs> They're saying that uh, Top Dog and them are trying to make peace yeah. with Drake behind the scenes. Is that true? Do you think that's true? I believe so. Yeah, because cause you know why? Because Drake have the have the uh, the influence in the industry. Because he's the uh, the uh, super wealthy golden golden boy. Well, yeah, and, he's the uh, and he has the, power. Yeah, and he's the he's the H N I C. He's the half nigga in charge. Yep. I mean, we got to look. It is what it. That's why he's talking to everyone like they are his sons. Exactly. Listen, I, that, that's all. But listen, I just you, we're gonna let you continue. I want you to you know finish your, your secondary points. But I, I, I look, ladies and gentlemen, we all have a wild, crazy family member. I think we should chill on Lupe Fiasco. He's earned the right to lie to himself, folks. I think anybody yeah. could get it though. If I'm an MC, I agree with us as just yeah. hip hop commentators, but. From the perspective of Kendrick and the rest of them, like if you coming off at, at me, I don't care if you are an icon. That's the whole point of, why, of with Kendrick on like that. He said, um, even uh, what's his name can get it from a legend, legendary rapper. Melly Mel. Yeah, he said even Mel Melly Mel can get it. Yeah, bloated biceps. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think Lupe I know the New Yorkers was heated. He was like, yeah. "What you talk about, Melly Mel? But Melly Mel was our up icon, our legend. Melly Mel was sitting up there well, talking shit about Kendrick Lamar's hair." Yes, you thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. He, yeah, man, he said that nobody want to be like, uh, uh, you know, or sound like Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. So, of course, Kendrick Lamar is going to take a shot at Benny Mill. He called him, he, he basically called Kendrick Lamar a toga flip-flop wearing Stargate nigga. Which was disrespectful because, you know, if you, again, I exactly. understand if you pick sides on this musically, Drake and Kendrick are so different that you're going to have people who, musically side with one over the other but to disrespect kendrick though as if he didn't drop three classic albums and all this other yeah. stuff he didn't bring to the game especially when you're an old head if you're a young nigga i'm sorry that's I a just, grand head yeah uh, young niggas be disrespectful all that's the a time. Grand <laughs> but when you yeah. a grand old nigga from from hip-hop you you from the beginning yeah. and you start talking that yeah, shit where, where i'm from stop it yeah, look, i'm gonna be honest with you where i'm from it, yeah man he from the beginning elders. wearing real clothes man yeah he did 
Well, you I mean listen, <laughs> Melly Mel can say what he want to say with them shiny biceps, with the print suits on that he used to wear. <laughs> Did y'all see the? Um, listen, you definitely put respect on their name, but you, none of them can call nobody a sissy today. You know, um, they, they were wearing the gayest shit in the yeah. early eighties until Rock came. L O Cool J yeah. and Run DMC came Actually, to the game. All the nipples was out. Yeah, the let's be real. Taps. Come on now, <laughs> let's be real. Yeah, with Compared the palms and all that. Yeah, the yeah. to the Furious Five and Melly Mel and all of them niggas, Scorpio and all them niggas. <laughs> Young Thug was conservative gay dressing. Right. Compared to them. <laughs> yes. Compared to them. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You got fish hooks and nipples and shit. What are we doing, niggas? Any last words, <laughs> night night, before we uh, open up the phone lines for others? Andy, what's your last words before uh, we move on to the other conversation? I want to mention this, that Drake ha- has another thing coming for mentioning uh, King's Lamar wife. Yeah, there we go. We did That's that. That's a no-no. I, I, I know. I know. You I never, that. you never can't miss with somebody's family, man. That that's that's out of bounds. You can't do that. Now, King Lamar going to have the gloves off. Now he's going to go really, really dirty. And plus, he's a Gemini like myself. Us Gemini's, we don't play. I don't give a I mean, damn. He's a lot, That's a lot. Night, night. The, the, you don't sometimes give a what you Gemini's, it, the problem is y'all play too much. But he's trying to say <laughs> Gemini's play dirty though. They play dirty though. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. Well, you so, know Tupac though. Yeah. Yes. You know, Tupac and Biggie Smalls, they both Gemini's themselves. Yeah. So, I know, and they, the, some you know, of the gloves is off, you know, like Gemini's. Yeah, yeah, man, Gemini's, you know, even Jadakiss, he's a Gemini. Us Gemini's, Gemini. we are a wrecking. Mm-hmm. That's why they yeah, get the funny. Jadakiss is a Gemini. That's why he was so funny. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, man. Us Gemini's, we don't play cause we, because we have the good side and the bad side. Man, they don't want to see the bad side. All right. Really, well, really man, reckless. Man. Do you put that on Pyro? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I ain't putting on no games. I'm not, right. I'm not affiliated. But. All right, yeah. You know, because, I mean, he was walking with the Jesus crown. He might have to put it on Pyro yeah, now. Night, 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 night. I, I ain't mess with all that. I'm keeping yeah. it just hip-hop. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying, Kendrick Lamar, you know, he, yeah, he, man, had, the, he, had, the, he had the Jesus crown. Yeah, K-Dot was, was going righteous. Yeah, yeah man, he was uh, uh, trying to change his change his life and change his you know, ways he might to go righteous. But now... Uh, Drake, Drake a- actually brought back the demon out of them. Yeah. <laughs> he right. actually, you know, woke up a you know eight foot giant, the boogeyman. We right. we gonna see what happened. Thank you, Night Night, for calling in. Shouts out to Night Night. Are you welcome, Thought Crimes. The phone lines are still open nine zero three six hundred zero five three zero. Call in right now at four thirty p.m. We will be on our Patreon for an exclusive live where we're gonna be listening to the alleged, the alleged uh, Drake <laughs> diss record. AI Drake, right? AI Drake. I told you all that's the new Twitter hack. All right. The response was made. <clears throat> Caller, you're now here with Thought Crimes. What's your thoughts on this uh, leaked diss record? Hey, what's good, y'all? Um, this is Ron, man, from uh, off of Twitter, man. What's up? What's up with y'all, man? Hey, what's, good? Uh, what's good, man? man Dry, I always see your stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Oh, uh, I want to say this real quick, and then I'm gonna dump off real quick because I gotta make a run real quick. But uh, the, I'll say this as, as, as a as a as a diss. The bars was nice. I wasn't feeling the beat. I just want to tell her to be personally, and I'm a producer myself. Okay, you so you know what's funny? You said that I, I did feel like somebody was trying to tap into some some lower bottom heavy metro booming Zaytoven energy a little it bit. It felt like Zaytoven mixed with the Diddy era with the because it was Get Money. I feel like a little bit of T you know, yeah. drummer boy. You know, yeah, 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 like. I feel like they whoever did it definitely didn't do um, the Get Money sample of uh, justice. Like you know. I get like, you. But aside from that, Drake came with it, though. And I'm looking forward to round two or, you know what I'm saying, when, whenever Kendrick decides to respond, you know what I'm saying, it, it, it should be decent. But I, and this, if Drake going to keep coming with this on this type of production, I guarantee Kendrick is going to wash his ass. It's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be a hundred. say no Diddy. I'm messing with you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, player. Go ahead. Do your thing. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, man. That's all I had to say, y'all. Man. I'm about to hop a off here, though. Okay. Um, appreciate you, man. Appreciate, well, I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all have a good uh, stream, man. I'm checking in on the uh, Patreon, too, for sure. Oh, already. Thank you so much, man. Uh, right, yeah. 4.30 p.m. We're going to have a, a fiery behind the paywall. 
uh, Patreon stream. We're gonna be listening to the lead disc record behind the scenes. Behind as well. the AI. <laughs> I'm saying these niggas, these these niggas are funny. These these people are funny in this space. Again, uh, the number is nine zero three six hundred zero five three zero. So uh, listen, you know. Oh, I want to say shouts out to the callers. Getting straight to the point too, by the way. You know, getting straight to it. You know, I, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. Right. I'm so Paula, you're here with Thought Crimes. What's your thought about this leaked disc record? Hey, hey, how you doing? This is uh, Jonathan uh, from Miami. Miami uh, in the building, oh, what's man. up? Oh, man, they shot up one of your generals, allegedly, Rick Ross, Ricky Rose, Dade County. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they, they got him, they got him. Uh, but, you know, he's been out of the... He's been out of the... <laughs> I love the J. Cole fans and the Ricky Rose listeners or people that reside. They just like, nah, they got him. <laughs> you know, they got him for sure. He ain't been, you know what I'm saying? He ain't been on top of the, or a contender as far as being on top of the rap game since 2010. So, you know what I'm saying? And since the BMF days, the MC Hammer days, that Teflon Don days, you know, when he had MMG first popping off with Meek and Wale. Right. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Okay. But um, what do you think about I, this alleged uh, AI Drake? Uh, well, I feel like with you know, just come out and say you came out with a diss record. Just, just be honest. You came out with a diss record. You want to bait the big dog K Dot, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm ready for K Dot to hit him with back to back to back a diss record. Hit, you know, come out with the diss record that you supposedly have for three years. Then wait for his response. Wait for Drake's response because you know that's going to bang out in the clubs or whatever. And then once Drake responds, you respond even more, and then you just eat through him. Because I feel like when it comes to the hip hop game, uh, the audience, especially you know America, Black America, we resonate more with Kendrick than than Drake. Like we, like I've said before, Kendrick is number one regardless. Kendrick has made classic albums. Drake has not had a classic album, and it's just going to be like that. You know what though, Carla? What what I think though is it's like not like a gang member. It's just gonna be like that. That's just what it is, my nigga. nigga. You ain't did. Uh, well, <laughs> I believe it's closer though than what people perceive though, because you know, we know a lot of millennials listen to us. We know we're in that age bracket. But when I look at a lot of the young people, they like Kendrick and Drake equally. It's, for them, this is like Godzilla versus King Kong. And this is why a lot of people are excited about it because, you know, whether you like Kendrick Moore or Drake Moore, you know, these 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 guys have an intertwined fate where people have looked at these guys at the top. You know, Cole is out of the, uh, the conversation right now because he decided to bow out. But for the well, 2010s... You know he is signed to better for, help records. Right. For, <laughs> but for the 2010s, unbiasedly for the 2010s, Kendrick and Drake has meant a lot to people uh, when it comes to their music and how it has resonated uh, with people, well, I think it's beautiful too uh, that you know, even though, uh, uh, you know, on another side of it too, is that uh, you know, all of these 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 guys, uh, you know, Wale has his listeners and his supporters, you know, despite the hurdles in his career. Uh, Crit, you know, I know for me, actually, most of them, with the exception of Drake, I did listen to one Drake uh, mixtape, which was the So Far Gone joint. Uh, but the rest of them, you know, I, I, I thought it was a dope class that came in. Uh, what I will say, though, definitely he's going to have to pick up the pace, though. But to be fair to Drake, to be fair to Drake, uh, we have not seen Kendrick Lamar exercise a full three verse track or 200 bar track. So we have to see. You know, again, as I said, but the industry is going to industry. They like to do this whole thing. The new my Twitter got hacked is that it was AI. I you do know? agree with you, uh, call Absolutely. Just say this is a bait disc record. Don't drop it. Then take it off. Then some then yeah. allow people to speculate that is uh, AI and then Elliot Wilson line. Yeah, just say that <laughs> on you, Instagram. Yeah, just say that you uh, just say that you fry hot dogs in Crisco oil. Y'all burnt the hot dogs. Come mm -hmm. on, niggas. But go ahead. Exactly. What else do you What else do you think from this uh, this angle? This whole weird uh, kind of spin that they're doing right now. I think they're doing the same spin that Cole did, basically. To it, hey, I might delete this later. They would just want to be like, oh, it got leaked. So if the public be like, ah, 
this is all over the place. This is trash. They could be like, well, it was leaked, so you can't really. This ain't a real one. So just you know, let me get let me get a chance to get back in the booth because they know they're not dealing with like you said a Meek Mill type rapper. They're dealing with a K dot, so they know okay, the public might not be ready for this. And you know, like you guys have been saying for a while now, um, Drake and Kendrick represent the 2010s culture. Um, they do. They they just they're the epitome of it. They're the ones the one A one B are basically, and you can put it in whatever order. Even though Drake came out first and got all the cosign from the energy of Wayne, that Kendrick never got. Like what you said before, Kendrick could have stood alone without that poetic justice song. You take that off of the Good Kid, Mad City album. The, the Good Kid, Mad City album is still fire. So it's, 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 oh, yeah, I love it. I, I love boy. I love it. Uh, Building Blue this is one of my favorite albums of all time. And I, I get what you're saying, especially for the millennials. And even if we want to go into the black space, but, you know, a lot of different groups listen to these boys. But, you know, uh, you know, people feel like uh, Kendrick Lamar is, you know, uh, the old black energy that's still in the hood. And sometimes they feel like Drake is the one trying to gingerfy the hood. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I knew it. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. And remember, remember. Kendrick never put on no blackface, whereas Drake, we've seen him in blackface thanks to Pusher T exposing that. You went in blackface with the Jim Crow hands we, out, we, uh, I, with I like American Slaves. I, I know, man. Paul, we we gotta, have to be real about it. I this. gotta be honest about that, though. We did make a joke called Blackface it's Drake, true. and everybody, you know, repeated our joke, but it was based off of a, a short film. <laughs> so, yeah, you can find the oh. film on the internet. Where, where they were trying to do their own version of Spike Lee's... Uh, Bamboozle. Bamboozle. It's a classic album. And what he was uh. doing in Canada, he was saying how people were so racist that yeah. they would give him, being biracial and light-skinned, a chance over his dark-skinned friend at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, although the him as a biracial, because he still had black in him, there were parts of certain spaces in the Jewish world and white world where... He still feel, faced racism as well, but it was a yeah. perfect and smart move for on, on Pusha T's part yeah. because he was mm -hmm. psychologically trying to get into uh, the mind of Drake. Where he, he watched that short film. He had had issues with, you know, when he mm. talked about his dad not being there enough. So yeah. Pusha T, it was a whole psychological uh, hit piece. It was very smart yeah. as a diss record. You know, I know a lot of people from Drake camp tried to Hide to it. to lessen it but it was a really good psychological diss record for somebody like drake i actually think yeah. you know in, since you brought up the blackface <clears throat> first of all i remember a long time ago coming across the little independent short film and it was it was him in there at the time i didn't watch degrassi and i had not been interested in drake's acting now that that's not a shot at drake i just wasn't interested right but I did watch a part of it, and then, but now when the the diss had came out, you know, I did my research. I went to watch the film, and I said, I said that nigga Pusha T is so fucking sadistic. He took everything they talked about in this little independent film, and he wrote story of Adi Don Farris to come. <laughs> like he weaponized the point yeah, like that said, this nigga Drake was doing in the said, independent. Steve Harvey <laughs> suit, the nigga made him like he was talking greasy about that Drake's nigga, dad. And you know how. Mom, you Child, know, you right. Lineage, <laughs> you know how nasty it got when he said you are hiding a child. It, I'm gonna tell you where the epitome of the nastiness of the track. Border Patrol. <laughs> when that nigga said your hair wouldn't nap enough. Mm -hmm. I said, who do that? But people, <laughs> black mamas and grandmamas talk like that. It's your nappy ass hair. <laughs> but I thought also the Whitney thing. I think he was trying to take a shot at Pusha T again too. Because remember, on Infrared, on the album, they had the bathroom where Whitney allegedly yeah, died. Yeah, we talked about that, and too. And then mm. Kendrick's wife's name is it's Whitney. Whitney. It, was, it was a triple so, entendre. yeah, he was trying to... Yeah. Right, he right. said, I move around with the bodyguards and all this other shit, you know. So, uh, you know, you know, it, it is what it is. But, you know, to your point, I get how a lot of things uh, PR-wise come off with Drake. And I've always been 100% real about that. But I also think because Drake has a love for American culture, and yes, he has a father, he has folks in Memphis and in Houston, and he hang around people. It's one thing, like, I go visit Bolivia every summer, right? But then the people that are from Bolivia that grew up there, they got a different energy. They move differently. They have a different language. I may be having some understandings, but I don't have the understandings completely. He's lost completely. tribe, though. 
Yeah. Because a, all, a, bun- a bunch of Lost Tribe niggas. Drake is Lost Tribe because all of his musical um, bloodline comes from his black side, though. Like they talked about. They could get popping in Canada. His dad, <laughs> like his dad, couldn't be famous in Canada. No, I know, but <laughs> all his, all the musical side in his bloodline though comes from his dad. Because they talk about his like uh, one time they had an interview with him and it was what like, uncle it was like Prince. your uncle. You yeah. had an uncle who played with Prince. And you then had Graham Station, an aunt who had, yeah. was really big in the music yeah. industry too. So that's where all of it comes from. Kind of light nipple baby energy. Well. You know. It was a somewhat of I don't know I don't know his life story to talk, but he did have a pretty nice house where yeah. he was showing that crib yeah. growing up. He didn't have to put it on Pyro. Uh, uh, caller, what else do you have to say on this? Oh, just the, the my last point basically is uh, Drake kind of with his you know career basically seeming to be kind of at that at that last final st- stage or whatever. I feel like he could have helped out him, himself making a more, like, one song that was more conscious. I know he did God's Plan, but that's more charity than black consciousness. It's Whereas, you know, K-Dot has always represented blackness to the fullest. And that's where a lot of people's disconnect with Drake comes from. Where, yeah, he'll make a nice hit. You know, he has a long catalog of hits that span from the Wayne era to this era now. But where is your connection when it comes to black consciousness, you know, this black uprising? And we've had 15, 20 years right now of you know, black struggle with it when dealing with the police and, you know, gentrification and just everything that has to go on and you haven't really spoken up on it. And that's where people's disconnect comes from. Can I say something to that though? And I wanted to, I really want to know what your thoughts are on what I'm about to say. He hasn't really talked about his Jewish roots either. He's really been racially neutral. Uh, You know, so do you think maybe he don't know enough about American politics or like what, from your perspective, you're right that on the surface, he hasn't really talked about any of these things, but do you think he has, do you think he's equipped to talk about these things real quick? Like to, to make a track about the black American experience or even talk about the biracial American experience or anything like that. Do you think he's equipped for that? Well, I would say it like this, he, all his whole lane that he's used is based on the black American experience. We gave him a lane. Not He didn't get big because he's, because of his Jewish side, he got big because of his black side. The black audience That's is true. what elevated Drake. You know what I mean? The Wayne, that Wayne energy that he first came in the game with, that's what got him on the plateau and on the stage that he got to. So I feel like he owes it to at least do some research or at least, you know what I'm saying? Give your that's perspective fair. on it. You well, know what I mean? Going, and I'm, you've been I'm, in. I'm, 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 I'm just that was a good response. I, I don't have a. I understand your response, but I, I, this is where I'm going to come at with it. Um, you got to think about it like this. The, the, and this is why I say you have to be real. Like, uh, when we look at Meek Mill, right, and we like, man, why why his music ain't knocking like it with Dreams Worth More Than Money? And then, you know, we actually start hearing him in the conversation. He's like, oh, he's, he's a dumb nigga. Like, that's it. It's not, the bar's not going to get any higher. He's, he's not going to beat Bob the Builder at any point in time, right? We, we get it. He's, you know, he, he's dumb, right? So we can leave it there, right? I understand where you, what you're coming from with the angle of Drake giving his public notoriety, right? Because again, with the history of Jack Johnson, um, we talk about Rosetta Tharp. Uh, Bella Fonte. Hey, what's the sister that could play the double keys, the pianos? Uh, Hazel. Yeah, Hazel Scott. Black celebrity has a, a, a different connotation to it, you know, because um, a lot of times they've been forced into activist roles too, by the way, or they've been forced into breaking the barrier. She, even right? Rihanna said fuck the NFL yeah. at first, and right. she's from Barbados. Right, yeah, so she's from Zamunda. So link about it. So when it comes to Drake, I think Drake um, is a beneficiary uh, of a lot of, African-American black celebrity sacrifices, just like Kendrick Lamar is, uh, even somebody like The Weeknd, who's able to cross the United States uh, immigration line, which that in itself for a lot of black folks, even black immigrant class, was a, a heftier issue at the time, let alone black Americans going from state to state. That was the issue yeah, with Jack Pan- Johnson, to be honest with you, coming from that. Pan-Africanism now, started yeah, in the United States, you're right. Right, so with Drake, however, I I do want people to realistically look at somebody like Drake. You grow up in an upper middle class Canadian neighborhood, right? Your mother's Jewish. She's Jewish white. Your dad is a black American man, but he's a black American man of status and prominence. Not only that, your uncle, right? 
Kendrick Lamar is someone that is said to have grown up in the the uh, the blood area, right? Pyrus and he he did t- the two T's and burning tattoos. Like, and when we hear his experience, his introduction into the four ray, we hear Good Kid, Mad City. Good Mad Kid, Kid Mad City uh, could be the Black American experience. Drake could sit through that whole album. He doesn't say. Notice Drake. He does not relate to these things. Sometimes I think you know there can be a bit of projection with not only just African Americans, Americans in general. You know that's why a lot of these lying ass politicians can pimp uh, Americans' desire or the average person's desire to live vicariously, or for them to say, "Please relate to me somewhere." My personal, ex- my personal experience, to be honest with you, concerning that is that when I look at somebody like Drake and I I hear some of the things he says. Look, there's a lot of things I just personally feel like it's, I don't know, it's, it's like trying to get an android to drink water. You know, yes, but there's some... one type of black experience, yeah. though? The black, like, a black experience have to be through only poverty and heartbreak, though? That's what my point is with, uh, real quick, Carla, we're about to get to you. Uh, that's what I'm saying with Drake. And I'm going to be honest with you all. Kendrick Lamar is giving you the music that people are asking for. You know, Drake says some stupid shit every now and then that don't make sense to me. I guess it's Black Lives Matter unless it comes to me. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Drake. But he's biracial. Yeah, I don't even it's know. The only problem is that. Yeah, brother, I don't even know what you're talking Logic about. Logic cries about being biracial more, which is why people make fun of him. But he's from Maryland. Drake only mentioned it about four times in his records over the 15 years he's been out. And just one last thing I'll just say about it. Uh, Remember Drake, that he said white people are scared of him. Right. But the last. A couple of albums. Overall, though, Drake has been making the music that people want from him too. Yeah. Some people, in, 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 as Black Americans, don't want Drake to speak up in certain ways, and then some Black people here do. Well, I just think it's a mixed yeah. bag. Yeah, but there, there are some vulturous things that, in his package, could be irritating to the general public, specifically uh, Black folk of the culture. Three one four. You're oh, one, now in the building. One last thing, real quick. Any more? Uh, 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 Vulturous than Meek Mill lying to everybody and pretending to be Martin Luther King and trying to use uh, black trauma to get what he want when he every day he's jumping an innocent black man while trying to act innocent. Yeah, come on, Sid. Uh, let's be real. I don't. I, I would. I, we won't get to the caller, but because I, I say I know what you just did. With, all right, let's let's get to the caller. I, you know, and then secondly, for the public, let's be real. Meek Mill, not for me. You know, I don't care. But Meek Mill was never seen as lovable as Drake to the general public. When he did Martin, that Martin Luther King fake shit, he did. Send that nigga back. Let's go three one four. You hear what thought cries caller? Go ahead. <laughs> What's good, Dr. Crowns? This is Jonathan out here in St. Louis. Oh, it's man, St. Louis, you that that's the home place of Metro Booming. What are y'all doing yeah. out there? Yeah, well, you're really Atlanta nigga now. Like, I know. <laughs> I mean, he ain't come back to the same. <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta took him. It, yeah. it is what it is. I get it. But uh, now nah, just to respond to kind of what y'all was talking with the last caller with, uh, I understand because I hear this a lot, like a lot of – you know, black people here in America, black Americans, we want, like, you know, this pan-African thing. And I, I you know, I lean towards pan-Africanism, but I'm also a realist at the same time. It's like, it's got to be the right niggas. They you know, know. That's talking all about, I'm like, saying. Drake, is- Drake, Drake has never shown that. Like, why are we expecting a cat to be a dog? Like, we, right. you, you can't do that. Right, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like, Drake, Drake, Drake only experienced racism. He said at some Jewish schools, and like he did experience yeah. racism for being biracial. But he doesn't have a Compton exactly. background, so why would he? Exactly. Like Kendrick it's gave different. us what we needed from him. He he's a genius. But Drake also gave us exactly. from his and he, middle class background. It, his stuff was: I worked at the grocery store, yeah. started from the bottom. Now we here. Yeah, and the bottom for yeah, him. For him, that yeah. is the bottom. Yeah, look at the bottom in the video. <laughs> it was the grocery store in a nice home. Yeah, he worked that as a right. he worked in the grocery store. He's talking stalker. from his perspective. He's talking from his perspective, so you can respect it. Like, and honestly, not, I, I don't want it. I'm gonna be real with you, caller. I don't fucking want to hear that shit from Drake. I don't want to hear. It. I don't. I don't want. <laughs> no, I don't. no, exactly. I yeah. would feel some type of way if he started. It would be on some. It would give me Barack Obama vibes. You like, <laughs> like are bin, you a real the nigga? Like, the juice. Juicy like, no Jake. disrespect for our ex president, but like, yeah. you, you really like Hawaii? Like, 
how many niggas you know from Hawaii? Like, well, Hawaii, you know, they I'm got sorry, some like, issues. Yeah, yeah, they do got issues on Hawaii. <laughs> it's just it ain't where. First of all, Obama. Hey, you, big, it's the yeah, disconnect. Yeah, Barack Obama. Think about this. Barack Obama's real name is Barry Satoro, right? Okay, right out the gate, you know, sometimes black folks can be, they, they would try to give him, you know, the Bryant Gumbel treatment out the gate. So they gave him Barack Obama, Shaka Zulu names, right? That type of shit. So he can relate mm -hmm. to the public. When I, when I hear right. Drake, I'm going to be marketing honest marketing campaign. I think what goes on in hip hop, though, let me tell you what the real issue is. I'm just, I'm just keeping the buck with y'all. There has been so much of colorism promoted in hip hop, especially concerning yeah. what they deem as a mm -hmm. standard of beauty in women. That yep. when a masculine vessel shows up and he mm -hmm. is the same standard of beauty by way of skin complexion, but this time the women get the cream over it's him. It becomes yep. yeah, it becomes an issue in hip hop. This yeah. is why niggas yep. in hip hop are it's trying karma. to be yeah they try to be yeah it's I, I keep saying the same shit you niggas yeah. sat up there the, the, the beautiful black woman better but that bitch look better, better red. red here come a red nigga fucking all y'all yeah. hoes now listen yeah that's but why this I said, is don't dark come karma to me. bro you yeah, can't I, that's why all i'm saying i'm, I'm just let you say you your thing but, all black women you can't be yeah, i'm gonna be real with you though woman. that's what all that's complexions a, that's what my point is let's keep it real there are it's niggas in this industry listen i'm telling you that nigga will sit up to you in your fucking face and tell you, he will lie to you and say Lupita Nyong'o is ugly, right? And give me a red bra, right. give me a light skin bra, give me a yellow bra, mm -hmm. right? But then they'll mm -hmm. see a light skinned nigga the color of Drake and say, look at this sissy nigga here. Get mad. Right? It's, but, and I, I just want to get mad. No, bro. And I'm just, glad just, you just, said that, Prince. I'm glad you said that, Prince, because I, I got that a lot growing up. And I was like, what? My, my grandma is dark. Like, what are you oh, talking about? Matter. I just had, my mama just happened to pop out light skin. Like, her brother's dark. Like, what are y'all talking about? Like, right, and a I lot mean, of people you know. be hating based off that. Like, just to say this real quick, and then I want your thoughts on this too as well, Carla. I do agree with the last caller, though, that Drake should present something, but I think it should be through financing. I don't think he should be exactly. trying to be a fake Kendrick because he can't do that. His true self was, I was working as a stalker at a grocery store. My mom had a nice house. That's his true starter from the bottom now we're here. He can't do what Kendrick do. And Kendrick don't, doesn't do what Drake does. They both two different artists who changed the game in the 2010s and who are still here. And just to say this uh, just real quick, you know, from, from people, you can't try to force someone to be something that they are not. Like, I, I love Kendrick because can we appreciate Kendrick's lane? And what he has done, and not try to force Drake to be him. This is like when they tried to get a young thug to be pro black. Remember, they asked him all them pro black ass <laughs> questions. And then when he gave you the response Stupid. that we knew what he was going to say, all of the all the pro black niggas was offended. I said, Well, why did you go to Young Thug? Why? I just, I just well, why? Young Thug, though, I do think there needs to be some type of decorum in the culture, whether it's Thug or Drake or whoever, Meek Mills, instead of running game on people. These guys should respect their ancestors, though. They should respect the building blocks and the sacrifices that people before them did. And whatever way it can be, it don't have to be the same way as Kendrick. It could be donating to uh, to right. to the right movement, uh, helping people, uh, helping other people come in without the alleged weird mm -hmm. Hollywood rituals that has to be done. There's a lot of things that people right. can do that don't have to be the same thing as Kendrick. I get what you're saying. Look, I have no problem with that. But, you know, if they if they even show any of that level of decorum, a third of these niggas would change their lyrics. You know, all of the, you know, right. beat it up like Emmett Till, smoking on Tamir packs, <laughs> trying to be the most shocking nigga on the microphone when you just sound right. dumb. But as far as the, the complexion <laughs> shit that goes on, Look, baby, That's I'm gonna be. Karma, like I, I said, I keep saying, I said, nigga, Drake is y'all karma. Eminem is y'all karma. Right, get over like, it, why they bro. put the white boy so hot up in the game? You niggas rapped about white women over black women for a long time. Well, that's because right? their white bosses told them to. Uh, Jimmy Iovine, Lucian Grange, they all told Jimmy them to. Jimmy Iovine ain't got no hair. They all told them to diss uh, black right. women, and them, them dudes listen. But go ahead, call them. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I 
No, nah, I hear you. I'll slap the shit out of Jimmy. I mean, bro, he tried to tell me what to do. Like, fuck. Bro, it's like, bro, they're literally, like, bro, trying to, you know, uphold, like, fucking Eminem. And it's like, nigga, we got Rakim and Nas. Like, he could never, like, don't tell me what You're is right, good. Brother, Hip-hop I'm, music. I'm, I'm this is our the, culture. The, the, the reason I'll why I the say, fuck out of that nigga. the reason why I say, look, <laughs> we we talk about hip hop, so I'll always say Eminem has one of the most spotty discographies in hip hop. Sending that we both said that, but as far on as a, on a spiritual level, on some karma shit, on some child support shit, there's yeah. a lot of people who happen to be black or people that are not black in powers and positions in music, specifically hip hop that went out of their way to tell or egg on black men to talk about white women, even in the pimping records, mm-hmm. you know, give me the white girl. Cause I'll make more money off of her than the black girl and all this other weird sex traffic and slave language. And here comes a white man, right? They, the, the industry throw his ass at the top of every other, I feel artistically superior rapper, right? All of a sudden, mm-hmm. niggas, I'm a Tulu Shakur. All of a sudden, they got an issue to talk about. <laughs> right. I'm like, and even some of the guys that was claiming they right. had an issue Gotta with Eminem, I had just got through listening to their records talking about, give me that Becky, give me a white girl, I need a Snow Queen. So here comes a white man, right? right? And they did the same shit that mm-hmm. you niggas live by. Same thing with Drake. You niggas ran around here, it's light skin, it's cut the dark, send all the dark skin women home from the video set, right? We don't want to, we, light skin girls are sexy. All right, so here comes a light skin nigga. He's singing to the women. The women say, we love Drake, mm-hmm. we love Drake. The first thing some of these niggas say, oh, y'all just be fucking with the light skin niggas. Which isn't true. It was so stupid because <laughs> the stupid. same black women Wait, find y'all ain't future no option but to fuck with light skin niggas. What are you talking about? Women, let me tell you something real quick. Black women got a uh, can I say some real quick, Carl? I'm going to be real to you. Black women have a diverse portfolio. They have a diverse yeah. portfolio. You'll see their boyfriends be a light skinned nigga, a biracial nigga, a fat nigga. You'll see. <laughs> a husky nigga, dark skin, light skin nah, in between. Right. It's like. You know, like they act like future isn't a sex symbol in hip hop. And who who's the women looking at him? Black women. Like stop it. Yeah. Like the 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 the, the whack ass complex that some people be trying to project on other people is just crazy. Yeah, but they, you know, but go yeah, ahead, call it, you know. therapy, bro. <laughs> Listen, I, look, therapy. <laughs> Drake is the I'm gonna tell you something. He he for the lot of these rap niggas, he hits all the trigger yeah. points. He's he's an immigrant. He really does. He's uh, biracial. <laughs> he's, he's he's a half Jew. Yeah. All right. He's what well, he said. He's six three. He's taller than a lot of the niggas. Because you know, if you meet a lot of rappers, a lot, yeah. a lot of them are like you know they, they, they are they're short. Small, they're smaller guys. It's, there's short. nothing wrong with that. But yeah. you know, you got to talk about certain things, right? So well, yeah. you know, that's on average for R and B singers yeah. too. Uh, Chris Brown. Yeah. It's considered on the top. He is end. a lanky Twizzler nigga. You yeah. know, dancers. You know, Future, yeah. Drake, J. Cole are considered on the taller end. <laughs> Say Drake is album yeah. his revenge. J. Cole is actually tall. J. Cole about 6'5". Yeah, he, <laughs> he up there with us, Snoop Dogg and them niggas. You know, uh, so. Yeah. You know, if, yeah, you know yeah, but they, yeah, they, they, yeah. they all do their thing. You get what I'm saying? So, like, I just feel like, you know, when they get into that and, you know, and then I don't even, sometimes, like, sitting that we talk about, other groups holding power in our spaces. I have the times more than the third time. I don't want to hear from a rap nigga. Some rappers I've seen complain yeah. about Drake being half Jewish. Y'all got songs saying my lawyer is a Jew. He gonna chew. Right. What are we talking about here? Right. No, that's Both said, of y'all like, counting for Jewish. What are you talking about? I, I don't even <laughs> no. care who, who people date behind the scenes. It's like what I don't like about some people in our community when they bow down to other corporate interests other cultures the, yeah the top 10 most popular women of our time like out of the top 10 like five of them are black whitney houston janet jackson you also got mariah carey you got so many people that could even be named so when you say a black mm-hmm. female can't sell your fucking moron no different than when people mm-hmm. sometimes come out and say well we got to get a white artist because they're going to sell. Michael Jackson is the highest the selling fuck out artist here, of all fucking time. And he did it when Red. he was dark skin with, with before his skin bleaching uh, day. So what the fuck the y'all effect, talking bro. about? Yeah. 
it's the it's the average white girl effect that Taylor Swift bullshit that be pushing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is but yeah. back to the the beef though like uh what what do y'all think uh kendrick's gonna come back with because we, we know that wasn't uh, ai shit we know that's not ai kendrick's right gonna do anything right now <laughs> okay he's gonna keep his verse i mean yeah. you think he's gonna keep his this record? yeah because they're doing this confusion shit this is some 48 laws of power shit going on the Absolutely, yeah. sent me wants him to keep it, but the spectator, I'm like, drop that shit. <laughs> like, come on, because Drake is mm-hmm. he's going to not, him and Chubb, they're going to keep waiting until Kendrick yeah. drops it. I thought he was going to say until they turn four. Yeah, it's only smart for them to do that, it's, you know, strategy-wise. You know what I think? <laughs> I, think uh, I think I think Kendrick need to go on and release that diss he got for J. Cole. Don't have nothing. <laughs> just keep piling on Jay yeah, Cole. Just, yeah, just, you know, hey, man. Shoot one of the bystanders up. Well, he you know? deserved it, bro. He's over here trying to play both sides of the fence. I'm just like, nigga. Like, just rap. Like, <laughs> But anyway, man, you, your final word of the day oh for, the, um, for this particular one here, man. What, what, what's, your final, what's your final statement here? Your verdict on this uh, this nah, particular nah, AI drink. What's your verdict here? <laughs> Let your cat do the dog ain't that shit. Uh, Drake said, "Some extra cats to be dogs." <laughs> All right, man. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, man. All right, we're gonna keep the calls coming too. By the way, again at four thirty, we're going to have the exclusive listening session uh, party on Patreon. Caller, you're now here. Oh no. Uh... All right. Now. <laughs> oh, do we have no? What's call? going on, y'all? Hey, what's okay, up? Caller, you you're here on Thought Crunch. What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I tapped in about that J. Cole situation. I'm that truck driver. Oh, man. On what's the, going you know, on, man? <laughs> what's going on with y'all? What's going on with y'all? Yeah. But to get, on, to get on this racial topic, we also got to understand we live in America. You feel me? America likes black culture done by non-blacks. You feel me? Drake is a is a Justin Timberlake with a, a, a nice tint to it. The way Justin Timberlake came into the game and took that whole R and B lane, it's the same way Drake taking hip hop. You feel me? About that, though, you... Because Justin, he when he lost it, he, no one never came. When he dissed Janet Jackson, that that fucking bum never got hot again ever. Like it's been, he's been in a, like a ten year drought. It looks like Robin Thicke might come back first. Yeah, it looked like yeah, it looked like him? it looked like alleged drug addict uh, Robin yeah, Thicke may come you back. See, you see Robin Thicke? He's singing in the hood. <laughs> Dressed like GTA. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. But Drake is smarter than Justin Timberlake. Drake is never going to disown his, his black audience because that's giving him his credit. That makes him more like, okay, he got that street aspect. That's why he do the future, the 21 Savage, the little babies. That's why he does all these features with quote unquote trap rappers because it gives him that edge. That's why I say commercially wise, America likes black music done by non-blacks to get, get to the mass. I, I, I get what you said, uh, uh, player. But I'm, let me just, let me just uh, give you like a flip of it, right? Mm-hmm. America is addicted to black culture. They're so addicted. That's true. They're so addicted that they'll take the Dollar Tree versions of it from anyone. Uh, yeah, I, they, they, yeah. They're so addicted. I, and I listen. Keep in mind, Michael Drake, Jackson, they want to fool you to, to yeah. make you think they want black culture on other people, but they want to fool you in that so we can give our gold over yeah, so because, they get all the money. Yeah, because, if, you know, if it was it was 100% true, Justin Timberlake would have cleared all of Michael Jackson's records off the shelf. He would have he would have ate them things yeah. up. But, no cracker version yeah. so far has outpaced or outbeat Michael Jackson. Right, and, and even... Even even with this, with, with concerning Drake, look, Drake clearly uh, identifies himself as a sensitive black man, a very emotional, sensitive black did you, man. Did you say sensitive because he light skin? Well, I mean, That's crazy. I, I, leave that, I leave that for everyone else. Right. He's going to he gonna get that regardless. You get what I'm saying? Okay, right. Go ahead. But like I always say, when he has to deal with that. You know, he because he at one point I remember Drake was annoyed with the light skin jokes. I said, "Nigga, welcome to America. Like this is America. Like that's what motherfuckers do. Like, it, you know, it's like you dirty Mexican, you dirty Jew, you dirty black, a light skin nigga, dark skin nigga. That's what America. America is an asshole culture, just in general. Right. Am I saying this right? No. Am I saying we're toxic? Yes. 
Absolutely. Yes. It's a toxic culture and there's so much money in it. Look at Donald Trump, right? Look look at look at the shit. Look and at Joe uh, Look Biden. what Joe Biden said, uh you ain't black if you don't vote for me. How toxic can you Wait, get? Joe Biden didn't make me laugh with the interview because when Charlemagne What's goofy that? ass was talking to him, he said, Look at my record. What he record? Just, he just kept yelling at Charlemagne. And he said he who, came in there hot. You yeah, don't know me. He came in there talking about like who you talking to. Yeah. He was about to call that nigga boy. But anyway, <laughs> we'll get back to the point. Listen, this is all I'll say to, to, to the point player. I think Drake, like any other individual that is deemed attractive by the general public or a standard in corporate beauty America, I think mm -hmm. that's where his pretty privilege works for him. In the same manner how they marketed the likes of Beyonce, um, even certain record what? labels, what they said to the likes of Kelly Rowland, by the way, too. I think now I, I actually feel what Wally was trying to explain is that he is a dark skinned black man. And he was talking about he wanted to be the romantic. That's what he wanted to be. Well, Meek Mill right? destroyed that because people forget it wasn't even white people who got in Wally when Wally was hot. Meek Mill is very possessive what? over Rick Ross what? and Michael Rubin. And he came what, at the time Wale out of I the circle. Like every time we bring up Meek Mill, it just well, takes the well, conversation Wale's down. personality <laughs> is what kills him. Wale's personality kills him. Uh, but you, I mean, I'm going to tell you what I'm about to go with it, though. Here's where the colorism comes in at. Is Wale's behavior any goofier than Drake's? No. <laughs> or anybody yes. else in that industry. Yes. Yes, are you hold, are you, you taxing Wale because he's a dark skinned black man? God, I feel there's a dark. Yeah, I'm a dark. Yeah, hold, hold, I know hold, that's hold, what, hold, hold, that dark. makes me believe you may hold, be taxing him. Okay, Carl, I'm really interested yeah. in this angle you got. Yes. Okay, tell Let's, me tell me why you said look, yes. Go ahead, break it down to us. Because he I'm don't have dark, J Prince, so he's gonna get hung out the window. So let's get that out the way. <laughs> so let's get. That I'm out a dark skin. <laughs> I'm a dark skin male, so I understand like certain things that you probably can't get away with that if your counterpart was a different complexion can get away with. Mm -hmm. Wale comes off as a, how to explain this? He, he thinks he knows it all. He's very emotional. And one, when you come in as, as a dark skinned male trying to get into hip hop, you cannot be like that. I love your mindset, uh, Carla, but you, you prove exactly what I suspected. This is a dark skin Wait, tax. Wait, can I ask a question? You know, just Have a, there been any, any black black prince but, who, in hip hop who has succeeded with like Wale being emotional? Well, I want to say this. Uh, yeah, Tupac. But name me name me one emotional rapper, Tupac. emotional dark skin rapper that can able to cross over into white America. You feel me? And My play man, both I just sides. said I'm gonna keep it real with you, Tupac. Is there anyone who just did mostly love? But Tupac had a street element to him. Nobody look at Wale as a street rapper. Let's pause real quick. Let, let's pause. And this is what I want to say. It, 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 I, I suspect that this is, was a dark skin tax here for the men. Okay. <laughs> Tupac, Tupac, when he did Keep Your Head Up, he got clowned for that record. He got clowned for mm -hmm. that record. I, I know in our time, the, the record ages, it, it, it ages like a, a meteor man, meteor asteroid. Sounds okay? like y'all both agree that y'all right? both are saying dark now, skin men are taxed. I, I, no, he said we agree. Yeah, so what I'm saying, we okay, then we agree. All right, then, because I, I, I'm saying there's a there is a dark skin tax for Wale. That is because the reason why I'm saying that I'm just I'm just making this clear, uh, just to say this thing. I want I do want to get this point out. We have to keep in mind, Drake has Jay Prince. When we've seen Drake in interviews, we've seen him when he had to hold his own. He's always giving you the same Wale moments. The only difference is the advisors in Drake's corner are better equipped for Drake's goofiness to be hidden. But Wale and don't I'll have that. that. But, but, he but don't have I, that. I agree with you, you on that. You want to catch him? I, I'm, I'm sure when we saw Wale slapping that tuna fish sandwich out of that vegan's hand on camera, <laughs> I bet you Drake got a thousand of those moments behind the scenes. Wait, just to clarify, and people, I, get, and people I, getting confused in the chat. Wait. These guys are talking about a dark skinned guy only being a lover boy and just doing mostly love music. They're saying in that in rap. In rap, in rap. specifically not, rap. Not a right. Not that a dark skinned guy can't be popular, but they're saying only doing love music mostly in rap, but, like love lyrics but, and shit. But go ahead, caller. 
But, but we also got to understand when it comes to Wale, yes, Wale make love music, but Wale doesn't have a, a good enough tonality like Drake to be able to sing like Drake. So while they trying to make love music, it's cool and all, but he's just not as commercial appealing as Drake. Because you don't know, because to be honest, for a casual listener, you don't know what Drake is. You don't know if he's Jewish, is he black, is he Palestinian? Like, you don't know what Drake, you, you, don't, you don't know. If, people say if the same don't... thing about Prince, though. They be like, is he Filipino, you know, Prince, he don't you, thought crime. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. You don't know what Drake lies, and that's the great thing about commercial. I get what you say. You say about, about uh, company. You talking about corporate ambigu- and, and, uh, yes. uh, ambiguity? Yes, ambiguity. Well, well, guys, though, so but I, Wale was really popular at one time. Where, yeah, because y'all saying is is the complexion that mess. Well, his personality, but when he was over there with Rick Ross, he still had um, mostly love songs on his album. Okay. He was still doing good, but, but that's then, what my point but is. But then though. he just he dropped off hard and he, never recovered. He, he look. He signed for Rick Ross and Pete Mill, and that was one of the best and worst decisions for him. It was. Yes, it got him out of the gate, but you, you signed to Rick Ross, you signed to Meek Mill. Yeah. Look what Meek Mill is doing right now. Look what well, Rick Ross is at right now. Well, this is what I'll say. This is what I'll say. I'm going to be honest with you, because I think people in this era, they do need to give Wale his, his proper due. You get what I'm saying? Because out the gate, he kind of opened him and Kid Cudi along with the likes of Lupe Fiasco, them them three boys right there. And I would I would even argue in the mix to yeah, and, yeah, and Kanye, yeah. but but then we're talking about new niggas now. We we not because t- Kanye was already in the. Oh record. wait, thank you. Wait, yeah, that's a good one. Because I was trying to think of a dark skinned black man who right. did do a lot of love music. Kanye at first, and even if we talk about eight oh eight heartbreaks. Although that was heartbreak, but it was you know love in there too. Because well, while they talk about heartbreak remember, and Drake but, too. Now we seeing the, the old, end of we yeah. we're seeing the end of like Kanye taking. Say, we have to remember now. Yeah. How many times they called Kanye West gay though, right out the gate? Of course they can right? call him gay. He <laughs> went through all of this stuff, right? The only the only protection he had was when Beanie Siegel stepped in for him in Chicago. He's tied to Jay Z and he's a lucrative money maker, possibly, right? When I'm saying the whole thing concerning uh the likes of Drake, I said, yes, there are a lot of things that are to be said about Drake, you know, with these things. But also on the flip side though, one of the things when people make those complaints, the culture has not been well receptive in rap music when American black men are just really just saying, I just want to make love of music. They got to go through all of this extra being challenged by street niggas, be- seeing it can be extorted. Go ahead. Because black America hasn't came to, to the acceptance that black people are not a monolith, that mm-hmm. black art comes in different forms. You feel me? We, we, corporate America only thinks black to only be approached from either you got to be a hood guy or you got to be a, a conscious guy. You got to be something, like, you got you to fit the box as a black, as a dark-skinned male to get into mainstream. That's what corporate America most likely thinks when it comes to an uh, artist like Wale. Can we really get this to mainstream America? You feel me? We can take Drake because Drake doesn't fit a mold. Like, we can, we can camouflage Drake into whatever... Or like whatever form that we want, Kanye, Kanye is a few in between where you can say, okay, he makes it because look at Kanye. Kanye don't he he don't like sometimes you don't know if you want to be black or not. You don't that's know if he's now cool though. Not. That's now though. You're that's right. Now. But when, but when, when he was doing the 808 and all that stuff and all them love songs and about dropping out of school and stuff, that's when we didn't know he was like that at that time though. Like that's when the time he yeah. was still had a black girlfriend and all that other stuff. But but look at it. He started from his black girl from college dropout, and he got from wider and wider and wider and wider, and he just kept getting white. Well, okay, it's, so that but, that space will normally do that to you, which is why I believe the flip is happening with Drake. He's trying to prove that I'm a nigga, I'm a nigga, I'm a nigga. Even now, he getting face tats, you know, because he's coming <laughs> from it. Yeah, like he's coming from the opposite perspective, like. Yeah, like, you know how I many people I, I knew that they didn't even know black people was even in Canada, you know? So like, <laughs> they didn't know until Drake but, came out. But, it's like, oh, black people are in Canada. And also, I gotta say one thing about Rick Ross. Rick Ross was doing some love songs at one time. Remember, Rick Ross had a huge female fan base where a lot of chicks loved him, even his fat ass. They loved him. It wasn't. A, people, yeah, people was got shocked. They they didn't know how 
big his female. I knew how much they loved his. They ass. didn't know how big his female fan base was until he came out with that track. Y'all all know it. She didn't know it. You, you don't know. Even know it. You ain't even know it. When he came out with he didn't even know it. His female fan base got mad like they did with Nelly when Nelly when Nelly did trip uh, uh Temp drill. Yep. Now and, every they, video and the look black like woman and um, they boycotted him with his Reebok deal because they were mad at him for doing that song. Yeah, because Rick Ross was he was he was running through a lot of certified nurse aides. <laughs> but but my thing about this is it's, it's crazy that let's get back like to his Drake topic where he's trying to prove that he is trying to prove that he's black he, he's down but it's like he's doing a, a very bad job in proving there his blackness. Go. There you go. That's he's really a, the a, biggest he, issue with Drake. When he tries to prove how black he is, as far as what they think stereotypical niggas are, right? This is where he comes off like Jamie Kennedy, Malibu's most wanted. You know, and I think <laughs> you know, I'm being real with you because look, I agree. With I, w- you. I, w- I was I was already we was already I, in Atlanta. We was already fucking with the the whole Dirty Sprite, DJ Holiday, Future, all of that shit, and. Drake understanding that this gumbo demon witch in Atlanta is turning the fuck up, especially with that hypnotic song, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, right? Drake threw his ass on there immediately because he knew exactly what the energy was, right? And it was a good, it was more, it was really a good look for Drake. The song Tony Montana was already hot. My personal, uh, 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 opinion i like drake without uh i mean i like the tony montana track without drake on it you know when it first came I agree. out yeah but well, when that when 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 what you think um atlanta represents what chicago represents what harlem represents to the black experience what new orleans represents to the black experience to your point i have we have seen drake uh reconfigure his energy to fit into stereotypical criminal aspects of these glorious black cities but go ahead caller but can I ask you this? What's worse? What, what's one thing that we all despise in black music is a culture vulture. Mm-hmm. Drake looks like a culture vulture because he jumps around from sound to sound, picking up these, these young black artists, taking 90% of their publishing. People don't say that. He takes 90% of their publishing. Yeah, he don't mind he charge them, but he don't, he don't allow them to keep the record. You feel me? He don't allow them to keep the record. Once he hops on it, once he hops on it, he takes it. You feel me? So, yeah, you may look to the people's eyes that, yeah, I got this record, but Drake is owning most of this record. So, you looking like a culture vulture out here. You do, you think, so, uh, you wanna... do you think people are on his ass quicker because of his complexion and his juxtaposition coming in from Canada versus Diddy was doing a lot worse for a long time? The, yeah, the Diddy was still in front. Diddy is the, the worst culture vulture <laughs> ever. He killed the allegedly <laughs> the most important niggas in hip hop history. Then he he butchered all these great R and B groups like One Twelve. And I mean, he was a terrorist. But go ahead. But what, what, what Michael Max said, the roots is gonna come home and crow. We finally get, we finally getting, we, we finally having his day. Diddy's he's finally having, having his day. True. He's finally having his day. Well, so, it like the uh, yeah. the coach is so, trying to give Drake his day. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get that nigga out of here. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. Go ahead. I'm not going to interrupt. But my, Go ahead. So you, you sit at the throne for so long, and you, you poke fun at black women like Megan Thee Stallion, like at Rihanna. Mm-hmm. You, feel me? you poke fun, and you, you take your shots at, and these are black women, black popular women. You mm-hmm. feel me? But yeah. he never pokes fun at white women he never says nothing about white women but he makes fun of black women you feel me well just real quick uh correction he did when he uh that shit popped off with that bony white girl uh bobby he said something about give a white bitch a shout out and she gets arrogant something like that he he he, he pointed at some white girl but, 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 but what's more what's more relevant in a culture bobby and sitting in that bed with Bobby. Or, <laughs> That's a great Bobby. point, caller. I love or, it. Or, or, no, I or, agree with uh, you. Maybe uh, uh, and, and Rihanna or, and, and Blackwood are more. Absolutely, I agree. You feel me? So it's like. And black people you, don't care about Bobby. They got tired of her showing up on the timeline. <laughs> Keep going, caller. You feel me? So it's like, do you really care about black culture and uplifting black culture, or you only want to use it for your financial gain? Well, I I will say you you bring up some some great points. Sexy I, I, red doesn't sexy, help. Sexy, yeah, I was just about to say that. Sexy, and I'm not. Listen, look, you cannot be called sexy anything, and you're not universally seen as sexy. 
That's the problem. <laughs> just and, and, just and, being and, real and with Drake, you. Drake, it does come off as a hater that you used to have all these really attractive black women in your videos and stuff. Now you bring in sexy rail. You trying to be vindictive? Like you trying to eat up the Meg the Stallion lane. I'm gonna keep it. Be, I'm gonna be real with you. Look, you know, just like any other group, people like to see the best of the best of the best in their group, and we know damn sure. Uh, black women do not enjoy raggedy representation. They might fuck with you on the back end, but you can't sit in the front yeah, of the class. If she's raggedy, got, she gotta be cute still. Yeah, and black women do. Uh, you know, they like to be represented. To be represented I actually right. See, <laughs> yeah, I actually see more more of the girls really, uh, you know, and, uh, fucking with the other girls versus the whole thing with uh, sexy red because it, it feels weird. I think this is, can I ask you this? Yeah, he has a he has a lot of he's R and B. Yes. How many black R&B singers has he put on? Like, really put on? Like, yes, I'm going to push, I'm going to uplift you to the, to the masses. You mean like I'm Kendrick did SZA? Like, uh, like and just, any, just any R&B artist. Like, really, truly, like, I'm going to really, I'm going to push you to the, to the forefront. He had uh, put on, uh, he did uh, features with Summer Walker. He did features with uh, Tanashi, although Tanashi is biracial, but. He also did. Uh, let me see if I can remember all of them. Uh, you know, he helped Sade's career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he has had R and B girls. On he's done songs with. Do, 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 well, does I think, he, he, I think he's asking, did. does he have like a, a direct, oh, like, a, like, like a, a direct a artist? Yeah, a, a direct, a direct. Yeah. Which you saw because how Kendrick was effective in Scissor's oh, career through OVO. Cause, cause, yeah. Because no, the OVO no. sweatshop, the OVO no. sweatshop. It, <laughs> no, no, no. It, he don't have no black girl he put on through OVO. That's a singer. No, go no. ahead. But he, but even his OVO sweatshop over there, look, look, look what party next door, Roy Woods, DFSN. Like, none of them artists are moving anything. You yeah, man, you it's see only, party you know, next door, they do it. Is he, he don't got no hair no more. And he like 400 pounds. <laughs> shit, that's some stressful Cause shit. Because he, he over his best hits over him. That's why the weekend had to get from over there. Like, Man, we would have never got Starboy. That's crazy. <laughs> we would have never got that. You, album. Never, you never got Beauty Behind the Madness. You, he would have been stuck in the sweatshop over there. But to bring it back to this diss record, it's like, it's cool. He taking shots to everybody, but it's like the main person that you need to go at. You tell him he need to do fifty push ups. Like this, what we like? Come on, man. We oh, can, we, I, we can I, I? I do feel there is if if it is true because Sin and I we did talk about. Sin. And again, folks, we look, we're gonna be getting up out of here in a minute because we're gonna be starting at four thirty for our other stream. But I do want to say this: I do believe that there is a psychological edge that Kendrick is, is itching to use, and it it is the American blackness stamp. You know, because we've we've actually heard Drake, you know, sometimes he's addressed it. Like when at the height of Black Lives Matter, he said in an interview that it's Black Lives Matter, except when it comes to me. And I thought it was a bit strange because I said, well, you know, Drake, you that's not something you've actually spoken about uh, concerning these things uh, in that regard. Got to be fair, and, though. He was talking about industry niggas. Uh, that's still now nah, that doesn't fly for me either, because, again, um, to the point of the caller and, and even to your point said, you know, like, were you actively pushing for a black woman R and B artist? You know, are you, are you, are your black artists coming out successful? Can we, can we see OVO looking like Dreamville, right? I don't listen to Buzz music, but I do know, you know, that those boys and them girls, Ari Lennox is out there that is able to do I'm those things. I'm devil's advocate and, here, though, guys. I know, but let me, let me just he say this here. He put on for 10 years. He was focusing on black men because a lot of black people in that hip-hop stuff, they don't really put on black, uh, black women anyway, except you know, for J. Cole and Kendrick here. But on you. average, none of them really do that. Baby, let me tell you something. It ain't no real word to just, like, I'm going to throw my verse on on your track and it's just gonna be hot anyway because I'm already the nigga that got signed co-signed by the the New Orleans nigga too by the way so that 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 uh the glow that last dragon shit does blow over but what I will say though um with this regard look you know what you listen I'm gonna be honest that is gonna be a talking point concerning Kendrick Lamar you know and uh, we've seen Pusha T psychologically fuck with Drake with that and I'm gonna be real with you all. The first thing Drake did, it was fucked up, but I know what was going on. When he said your hair couldn't nap enough, 
all of a sudden we saw the album cover where he had the I'll be sure waves Thank in his hair. And it's That's cool, true. but then we Name also one see one black person that's gonna go put black face on. Name me one person that's trying to prove that blackness is gonna put a gym. Guys, that I'm... was okay, Spike Lee Bam bamboozled and yeah. again it was a short film. Now we did make fun of him too, but it was a, it's a literal movie he had with but, his uh, uh dark skin friend in uh, Toronto. But I do have to say this real quick because it is important. Okay, you're talking about a hip hop industry that ignores black women most of the time, but take our aesthetics and give it to others. Ye has done it himself, giving black women aesthetics to white women and propping them up. When you talking True. about Drake, Drake don't even really rap about bringing up uh, black women. He talks about brothers because most of the time in hip hop, they focus on the men. And I'm not saying whether it's wrong or right, you know, guys are more focused on their ego and focus on themselves. So when he's talking about my brothers, but my brothers and I put on my brothers and he's talking about a lot of black the, men. The older he thing ain't is, really, you know, but, most of them ain't really but, thinking about putting on black women. But this is what I'm saying my, here with this. Is, this like go ahead, he put, well, I'm going to say this, Carla. I, listen, this is what I said earlier about Drake. He's not interested in that. W what he is looking for uh, constantly is... I wanna, I, I, well, I, I'm looking for approval in a lot of as as many of these artists are. Like when Soldier Boy went to Bompton and he put his hands around <laughs> someone, and that nigga said, "Man, nigga, don't get your hands off of me, nigga." Not from his perspective, right? So you heard that uh, that track where he said, "I took," <laughs> where he from his perspective, he said, "I took niggas out the hood." You know, even though I'm not from the streets and blah 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 blah. Yeah, you know, he had yeah, that whole. Verse. He took him out the hood and put him in debt. So he's right, absolutely. So moving on, right? But here's my thing. About it. So here's this is all I'm saying. Look, I look. My overall thing is is like concerning Drake as a, as a, I guess a, a, a half a, a American individual. I don't really care overall about his biraciality. But when we I do have either. these, when, when we do have these talking points, when we bring up how they've tried to bury Whitney Houston's legacy as a black woman from Newark, New Jersey, or they've tried to canonize and restrict the likes of Ashanti, but give the same aesthetics to J-Lo. Irv Gotti did yeah, it. Diddy when did we that. Talk about all this, those black dudes did that to them black people in that industry. All I'm saying is this. Well, Irv Gotti is corny. Irv look, Gotti look, look. is from Taiwan. So we have to keep that. Yeah, you're right. He, he's, <laughs> he's from Taiwan. That's what I heard. His mother, somebody's from Taiwan. <laughs> That's what they said. I thought he was Italian, but they said no. Nah, Sin told me she said no. He's Cambodian. I said, what the hell's now, going well, on here? Whitney, you can you can blame the crackers because Clive Clive right. Davis did that to Whitney. But just to yeah, real quick, I'm just the Shanti one yeah. was you know Irv I'm Gotti did Brown. that. Here's my thing about it though. This is what I will say, and and it's a fair conversation because we've had these conversations concerning black energy and artist period. We've talked about the colorism and the abuse that Michael Jackson suffered along with Janet and the rest of the Jacksons. That can be talked mm -hmm. about. We can even talk about the notion of L.A. Reid trying to blackify pink, right? We can talk about that mm -hmm. as well. People can talk about, especially when it concerns the women, people can talk about colorism concerning the women or the idea mm -hmm. that you've heard people say they're going to promote a biracial woman, but label her overtly as a black woman. Right. And yeah. we've seen the Danny Lee where you know, she's promoted as his black girl, but she got songs. He won a yellow bone. Right. And These she got made fun of and she right. was embarrassed by that. My thing is this. And she apologized. She came out and had to. Yeah. My apologize. thing is this, how, how they are talking about Drake in the tradition of the black American experience and what goes on with colorism and, and thievery and hypocrites in the industry and people that are really meaning it outside the industry. I think the conversation falls in line with that chapter of racism that all black people have to experience in their own way or form, how they have to deal with it in America. Uh, what I always say though, when I do hip, hear the hypocritical uh, rappers and label folks, and even some of the folks we talk to behind the scenes, that they made it a sticking point about this boy being mixed and half Jewish. Like I said before, and I told them on the phone, I said, "Well, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the guys that y'all mess with uh, overtly disregard black women, even black people. You got you got niggas that have no problem shooting a black man down in Walmart." And they will not put their hand on anyone else. You get what I'm saying? So that's but all I'm saying I, is in, in the long I, story history. And, and Carla, you're going to have the last words, but I just really got to say this to both of you guys. I agree with that last part of what you're saying, Prince. 
I personally feel like a lot of people are trying to crucify Drake for the sins that all these niggas have done and worse. The only thing that people have in the right, like, I feel like Kendrick perspective, he on a personal level, if he feels like, you know, Drake is uh, sharing bars and being a cultural in that sense, that's fair. If Future like, bro, you like, you hating on me, you been hating on me ever since, but that's fair. You know, if ASAP Rocky like, bro, I always been cool with you. You did put me on and you was helpful to my career, but now you're going after my uh, my girl, the mother of my children. You a fuck nigga now and I want to see you bleed. That's fair. But when people <laughs> people try to talk and make like Drake is this is the reason why hip hop is this way and all this other stuff. No, nah, that ain't they, over, they, not, they that's overly not charging the dude's credit card no, for I, things that other people have done no, far I think, worse. Look, I don't I don't have a problem with that. But here, Carly, let me go to you. I'm also speaking from like you got to think about this sin. We're not even I'm moving moving these rap niggas out the way. We're talking about the black consumer who they are tired of a particular energy. And sometimes unfortunately whether people mean that you may particularly fit into that which is why like okay, if we seen a situation with Nipsey Hussle, he's dead, right? He was a mm-hmm. light-skinned nigga too by the way. And he got a family from Eritrea, right? He get killed, mm-hmm. you know. We seen what happened. We see what he was doing in the community, though, right? Then mm-hmm. some other people, not saying all of the consumers think alike, but when the question arises, well, if people were plant up, because again, hip hop consumers and black listeners have chastised American black men that are faking the funk, talking about I'm from Compton, I'm from Chicago, uh, I'm from Baltimore, I'm from Newark, and you find out that's far from the case. You know, we've seen them be called out. I do believe this. Now, this is to the OVO fans. When Drake gets called out for behaviors of talking about, I'm a killer, I'm a gangster, I got shooters, and people did witness what happened with Nipsey Hussle. Black America did experience Tupac. They experienced Biggie. They've experienced the Big L situation. When black folks say, like, hey, bro, all right, we get it. They said, and look what black people push back on. One of the reasons why drill music don't sell is because black people are tired of it. They've been tired of it. They didn't want it when it was getting popular, when the Chirac shit popped off. You had Chicago black activists with young people saying, hey, man, it's Chicago, not Chirac, but, right? But, so, but can I, can I, can I go push ahead. back on a little bit, though? Go ahead. Because our, as a black person, I'm a young dude. Yeah. Are we really tired of that? Or we just, like, a part of us is we conflicted that we do have some toxic side to this. Like we do play a role in our behavior of like, okay, we do do the same thing Drake does. We do do some of the same bullshit. And we also call him the kettle black too. Like, that's all I'm saying guys. It's like, we have worse people like Diddy and other people out here on these streets, but go ahead, Carl, finish your point. We do do some, the same shit that, that kind of can contradict ourselves in this. But to kind of get it, because if we try to exploit this into a bigger conversation where it's a black issue, yes, this is, is a bigger issue where we're talking about colorism and the black consumer is tired of, like, this toxic behavior that we have. But as a young dude, we, we're pushing the Indian young boys. We're pushing the, the Lord Dirks. We're pushing a lot of... But I'm going to tell you something I, real quick, Carla. I'm going to be very clear with you. Kendrick actually sells. Drake actually sells. No, right? I'm, 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 I'm just I'm just making a statement here. The Migos actually sold. Them boys you're talking the about, talk about. But no, think about it. Them boys talk talking about. about. No, them well listen, at the end of the day, think about it. Bad and bougie. Of course, the cooking of coke. But America, look, Godfather movie sold. Italian crime film sell. Crime is always gonna That's sell true. in entertainment. Look at look at Game of Thrones. You got cousins, fucking cousins that enter criminalism, right? Positive right? stuff sell but, too, like so, Enter the Spider Verse. Right. So yeah, so Enter the Spider Verse that that does sell. The, here's the thing that I just want to say to this point. Right? We can't just, have it all. We here's we the thing. At the end of the day, I do want to make. I agree clear. with that in criticism. Go yeah, ahead, Prince. This is what I'm saying. They entertainers. That's they're true. Entertainers. I, they, I, mean, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. Like, this is what mm, I make the point of. No, we have an American history where a lot of entertainers have been really important. But, but, also, we saying, about but, politics but, but also because they are entertainers first, they have the option we, to opt we, out. They have the option to opt out. I'll say this again. They are entertainers. I, just to finish this call, so I want the chat to hear this. They have the option to opt out. That's why I said they're entertainers. Jay-Z puts on the wig. After a while, people are like, yeah, they get to clap in. I'm in them zone. And remember, they artists. 
artists are some of the moodiest motherfuckers on the planet. But do they really, yeah. when they get contracts so, on them, they get killed, though? So, <laughs> I mean, they do. Well, they before we take it this here, <laughs> before we take it this, let me just keep this focus here. I just want to keep this focus, right? They're entertainers. They are entertainers. You're going to have some Harry Belafonte's. You're going to have mm-hmm. some... You, you, who, who, you're going to have some people that are really going to, like, yo, I really support this. But also, you're going to have some people that show business is entertainment. Baby, show business is a bunch of bullshitters. They feminists one minute. They black activists the next. Now, with the Trump like and the MAGA fault. money, the far right, they're <laughs> racist the next. Look at look at uh, Rob Schneider. Uh, what is it, the, the comedian, Schneider Deuce Bigelow? He did all of them films with niggas in it, and he was he was playing right into them tropes. He was a leftist at one time, and then when the money was drying up because he wasn't funny and he was getting well, older. He allegedly a bottom. So yeah. I mean, he's yeah. gonna go whoever. Well, well, gonna so and then, look at, and then look how they throw on the anti woke agenda. Well, uh, go you ahead. You get what I'm saying? Carla, We're gonna I, wrap look, this up too, by the way. But yeah, go ahead, Carla. No, Carla, you get the last word. I, go ahead. Can I say this? All right, look. I think we we do need to treat these people like entertainers, like. These are just rappers. We need to kind of separate our agenda and our and our aspect of what we want black culture to become and understand like these people are just rappers. That's all they is, is just rappers. They just talk good, they put similes and metaphors and triple entendres together. You feel me? They are not Michael Mack, they are not Martin Luther King, they're they're, they're not uh Larry they're none of that. They're just rappers. And I think that's what we need to kind of like understand when we get into this next decade to separate these people are just rappers and start looking to these, start looking to these people to try to save us and be the spokespersons for our culture. And yes, we only have quote unquote basketball players and football players and entertainers to represent us, but that's on us as a culture to be like, okay, we need to find other representations of ourselves to aspire to be like. I actually agree with you with that. We need to get into other fields and science. We need to talk about people like uh, Catherine who and uh, black women in NASA who basically did the calculations for us to get to the moon. We need to talk about the black men like uh, Carruthers who his technology in space, in order for us to even see the moon, mm-hmm. uh, 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 is still up there. Mm-hmm. So we do need to talk about other things. Yeah. The only thing I would have said, though, Amer- in American culture, Entertainers have always been important, and they always have moved the needle too. Because when John Lennon was doing, you know, women's rights and feminist shit, yeah. it was a big deal. Even though uh, they was trying to get before he got assassinated, he uh, was supposed to get deported. Then we forget about because people try to lie and say only in black culture we've had a lineage where entertainers were very important and help change policies and stuff. It happened for white people too, yeah, because it, it the, the, one of the biggest imports for the United States is, is, is music well, that was created biggest, by black yeah, people, of course, export, yeah. but yeah. the Beatles, the Beatles came in based off of Motown. They came in trying to do a uh, uh, cheap versions of black people music. They forget. Mm. And people forget that Diana Ross and the Supremes at one time was the highest greatest group in artist period before the Beatles came out. Yeah, that's what I just wanted to be clear at the end of the day. Look, Y'all shawty, they entertainers. They do, they have the option of opting out. That's it. Like, you could go into as much, as beautiful as to pimp a butterfly is. You might go into Kendrick Lamar's neighborhood. That nigga may call the police on you. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, yes, entertainers, they have been important, but don't be shocked. When they say, you know what, I'm 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 out, I'm off the train. I don't I'm, I don't you know? know if they most of them could get away with that though, because we have a history uh-huh. where uh, entertainers get killed. Like they have, I don't I don't want to go too much into it, but um, we had not just with Heath Ledger, but uh, with a lot of actors and actresses like um, with Brittany Murphy or what we hear and with Ashton Kutcher, people saying like he left some dead girl somewhere and he look. Well, think about of, what you're saying. Pause that right quick. Just was saying. Artists get a, be able to get away clean, but, like but Ray Charles. It, the feds and them was trying to fuck him up and but, all that. But that's my point, though. So even what you're saying still goes into it. Is that the notion that even the ones that say like I want to opt out, but think about the fear tactics that go on. Yeah, you can't. Like, it's really blood in, blood yeah, out. You can't saying. never really leave once you sign those yeah, contracts. So that's what I'm saying. Like they for got, a rare few. Yeah, man. I'm like, bro, you you got more freedom than them niggas. I'm just being real. Like, nigga, you, if you wanted to start up a local chapter in your community and just, you know, rally, I don't know, 17 mamas in the neighborhood, you're going to get them to show up. 
You know, these people got contracts on their head. They got witches cursing them with chicken blood at night. They got a lot of <laughs> yeah, shit going but, but, on. <laughs> I agree with that, but they have a bag where it's like, yes, you may have them 17 mamas in that church right. talking about things, but he has seven figures, eight figures. If he ever decides to wake up on a different side of the bed and say, you know what, I'm just going to pay 10 people mortgages off. I'm just going to send 10, 10 black kids to different schools. or I'm going to fund 10 different blacks. Uh, activists, he can do that. So, I agree, but the accountant can't be non-black. If, if most of the accountants are not black, most of them are getting robbed by the accountants, and then they have handlers who, who's waiting to collect on their uh the insurance policy on these on these entertainers' head, and then you got instigators every time they plan to try to do something good. There's people trying to want this black guy to fight this black guy and this black woman to fight I, this I black woman, that. and it's and then they, they have. Uh, the lying ones who be thieves like Diddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I tell you this. Listen, even look, I, I, I get what you said, but also the other side of the game. Look, bro, I don't know what Drake doing. Drake could be quietly paying people's uh, cancer treatment off. We've seen that. Like, we look, I get, that. We found out after yeah, she died, yeah, she was doing that a yeah, lot they, for some children, of these black people do so much a charity for folks. Look, Tariq Nasheed, very, very a uh, polarizing figure for folks online, right? But I, I talk to people that dealt with the brother behind the scenes, and they say he really puts his money where his mouth is. And they say Yvette yeah. really is, is putting in that work with yeah. Ados. Yeah, so and then again, you got people who are part of Pan-Africanism yeah. who really put in that work, too. So that's why I say, like, at the end of the day, like, I mean, we do, like, we can talk about certain things that they represent, but at some point, like, we're, we're kind of speaking overly excessive beyond the entertainment space to the point as as people in America where it becomes projection because you don't know. People find out all the time, like some people meet certain uh, celebrities. I've heard stories about it. They felt like this person was mean in person. Then you find out after this nigga croaked that, you know, he was paid. Look, look at the shit with Young Dolph. Look at the shit with mm-hmm. Young Dolph. Somebody might have looked at Young Dolph, may not have no connotation or context about who he was as a complete person, and they'll just be like, see, look at this shit here that these type of rap niggas have done. And then you find out, based on what his widow was talking about, people in the community that he affected, like when he got the downside of putting all that on one person too, let's say something does happen to them. It severely harms the community right. if things aren't set up correctly where Things can move beyond the physical entertainer in that regard, too. So, look, there's another dynamic, but we, we, y'all know how we do it on Thought Crimes. We didn't turn the Drake AI diss allegedly into a whole C-SPAN think piece. Right, and the last <laughs> thing I say, at the end of the day, I still agree with you, Carla, that we yeah. need to try. But people have to remember, American culture, there's so many agents and, and provocateurs and troublemakers. You got Elon David Musk. Banner. Over there on X, starting trouble, lying about the people of Brazil, being pro-Israel. If you're pro-Israel, that's your business. But he telling the truth about that here. He lied and said he was supposed to be about freedom of speech, but he's over there uh, trying to play God on X, and actually worse than um, uh, Jack Dorsey, who he's the one who actually created that from scratch. Like people got to remember, Tesla, an American white man, created that. Elon Musk hijacked that shit for him and try to make himself look like a genius. You know, SpaceX, that's uh basically just material from NASA that uh SpaceX get to have for cheap. You and sure? people trying to yeah, repurposing. No, saying, I think you're so, wrong. Last time I checked, I think Kanye <laughs> West invented that. Right. So, so. <laughs> just have to remember, guys, to have and this is something that I had to learn because I'm a i am I used to be a very judgmental person. I do agree that you could still have the criticism. The sexy wet shit is uh, is disgusting. Well, you still judge yourself. And, and Drake, there's a mm-hmm. lot of things to criticize Drake about. <laughs> you still go ahead, and, man. And, and also uh, future about and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, people just one last thing have to remember how savage the American imperial culture can be and how they even uh, uh, play their own people in the United States all the time. Look how they gaslight us and make us think that Bill Clinton and, and Hillary Clinton wasn't connected with Jeffrey Epstein or even the people that Trump used to hang out with. Like, we, we as Americans are always gaslit. Always. Yeah. All right, then. I, there we go. I, I, I agree with you on that, but my thing about this is, as a black as a black consumer and a black person in America, I think we fail for, like, our black identity to try to be the white consumer, the white person. I agree. Like, you feel yeah. me? It's like, we for that same power that the white man has and the money that the white man has where it's like this system's not built for you to survive and thrive and uplift 
what I think it's what twelve percent of like society of America is is black. Or well, you gotta 20%. remember now. Keep keep in mind that a lot of black people don't fuck with filling that census out. So you you really is not really an appropriate figure. So you, you know. You, Wait, black, more. Yeah, you know they really don't. They what really you, black folks on average just don't fuck with the censorship. All right, but what you feel like is like oh, we know we're not the majority. So we know we're not the majority. But my thing about it, we do make up the most impact, the most culture. We 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 move things without without having much in our in our financial gain. I agree. Well, you that's why me? you got all these niggas fighting though, because they, you think about it, the yeah. music industry. As I said before, it's on wick right now. It's been starving. They, that's the only reason why they had Taylor Swift over there, right? And Beyonce switching from genres whenever she feels like it, right? She's doing what she needs to do. It is what it is. But notice all of the artists that are involved in this whole quote unquote beef. You know, uh, these companies are. This is a this is a nigga stimulus package right now, including Drake. Okay, <laughs> this all, Drake fighting Future and Metro and Rihanna and ASAP and Kendrick. This is a nigga stimulus package for the music industry. And thank you, Carla. We have to get to our our four thirty okay. appointment on Patreon. If you want to continue the conversation on Patreon, you can. Great conversation. We love you. We love everybody. Come over to our Patreon right now. We're about to get busy. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs>